The following is an exclusive presentation of Access TV Sports. 27 miles of Indiana countryside mark the space between two institutions rich in tradition. It's good, it's good, it's good, man. It's good, it's good, it's good, and that ends the game. Today, a rivalry 123 years old beckons for its annual contest. A matchup to be settled on 100 yards of gridiron. The winner taking home more than a coveted trinket. Hang tight, let's go, let's go! For the DePaul Tigers, Coach Bill Lynch and senior quarterback Matt Hunt look to bring the bell home for the first time in eight years. Get it! Hey! With new head coach Don Morrell at the helm, the Wabash Little Giants have no intention of letting it go without a fight. The 123rd battle for the Monon Bell starts now. A spectacular fall afternoon in Crawfordsville, and what a matchup for the 123rd battle for the Monon Bell. It's 7 and 2 DePaul against 8 and 1 Wabash, and the victor will take home the Monon Bell. Rich Cellini, Paul McGuire, welcome. 11 years in the NFL, now your 46th season of broadcasting. And today, this is the fabric of college football. Is it ever? You take a look at it. You're looking at a bunch of guys on both teams here that play football because they want to, not because they have to. These are guys that go to school to get an education first. Football is second, because if they have something to do, workshop or whatever it is, they don't even have to come to practice. They can just stay at home and work. This should be a very competitive game. Let's break it down. First for the Little Giants at 8-1. They have an outstanding defense. They really do, and, it, and it's surrounded by these three guys are linebackers. Connor Ludwig, who is the leading tackler on this football team, is the number one guy. Then he's got Hanson, and he also has Bowden. These three linebackers are one in tackling, two and three. When you look at them, and you look at the tackles they make, once you cross the line of scrimmage, the defensive line has already done their job. These guys clean up everything, and I mean everything. And the focal point has to be Matt Hunt, odds on favorite to be the conference offensive player of the year. He does everything for the Tigers. You know, it's amazing. And when we were talking to the players yesterday, they were talking about, all right, who's the guy that you have to worry about at DePaul? And the first thing they say, well, it's Matt Hunt. They don't even consider the receivers or anyone else running backs they say Matt Hunt we have to stop this guy you got to understand he's a 65 percent passer but he also is the leading rusher he has two very good targets one the young man he grew up with and played with in the backyard his little brother Andy he also has Ian Good Ian Good and Andy Hunt you know these guys here two guys that have caught nine more passes just the two of them than the entire Wabash football team so our cameras today are going to be on these three guys, basically. Shapes up to be one heck of a battle for the Bell. Will Wabash set the record and win their eighth straight, or will DePaul snap the streak and take the Bell back down the road? It's the Tigers and the Little Giants coming up on Access TV. here in Crawfordsville 123rd battle for the Monon Bell we're at Little Giant Stadium Wabash still has a chance to capture at least a share of the conference title and try to get into postseason but the biggest piece of each side's entire season is today and the thing that all the alums talk about and remember is how did you do in the Bell games Matt Hunt 
four-year starter quarterback trying to win his first. You know, it's an amazing thing when you talk to these guys, and most of the guys we talked to yesterday are seniors. And the one thing that they don't want to do is end their career with a loss. Wabash has won the seven straight. Did you sense that maybe there was a little bit of pressure on them not wanting to be that group that finally snapped the streak? And let's check in with the former quarterback for the Little Giants. Here's Matt Hudson. Thanks, guys. Down here with head coach uh, Don Morrell coaching in his first Bell game as a head coach. Coach, the last five years you guys have gotten off to such a hot start. Talk a little bit about the importance of getting off to a fast start against this improved DePaul team today. Well, in a big rivalry like this, it's critical. You don't want to get behind early. Uh, so we're going to try and do what we've done all year, possess the football, be mistake free, and uh, hopefully they'll make the mistake on offense. We'll see. Does it feel a little different being the head coach for the first time today? Uh, you know, I've been down here a bunch. I was down on the sideline last year. It's different. Uh, you have complete autonomy, but it's exciting. This is a great rivalry and a great college football game. Good luck today, coach. Over to Brad on the DePaul sideline. All right, thanks, Matt. With DePaul head coach Bill Lynch. And coach, it just seems, I don't know, more relaxed this year going into the game. Well, we got a great group of seniors, and, and so many of them, this is the fourth time they played in this game. So they understand what it's all about. and. Uh, you know, we've had a great week of preparation and anxious to get going. How important these first few series, this first quarter for you guys to get off to a good start? Well, I think it's important. I mean, because we've fallen behind the last few years. So obviously we want to get off to a good start, but we've been talking uh, all week. It's going to be a three-hour football game, so we're going to play it to the end. All right, good luck, Coach. Appreciate it. Guys, back up to you. DePaul won the toss, and they elected to take the football first. You know, we couldn't have written the script any better. We talked about the defense of Wabash and the offense of DePaul, and we're going to get it right in the first series of downs. You know, and it's just going to tell us and you what they're going to do, Wabash, defensively against, seriously, Matt Hunt, who is the quarterback. They need to shut him down. What I mean by that is that the, the end's crashing down on either end. they got to keep him in a the pocket. They cannot let him get to the outsides because that's where he can burn you. People still filing into the stadium and outside in what has been labeled the Monon Village. Oh, what a scene today. news is the scene's going to continue well after the game, Paul. The bad news for you is they're throwing you out by 7 o'clock tonight. <laughs> so keep that in mind. You know what? The thing about it is when you're looking at the people coming across the railroad track and you're looking at, at listening to that bell, and when I come home after this game being here because they start ringing this thing like 17 months ago, and <laughs> I get home and I answer the doorbell for like two days because I think the bell's ringing at my house. One key thing we should make a note of to follow on this one, and it, it was DePaul's undoing in last year's Bell game. The turnovers, they had three in the first half, and they have to figure out a way to stay in this game for four quarters if they're going to have a chance to win it. Control the ball. It really is very, very important. It's important for every game that you watch. But when you look at these guys at the beginning, they have lost the game almost every single game in the first quarter of the game. They just give up too many points and they don't take care of the football. That is one thing they really have to do. Skyler Nayrig out to kick it off for Wabash. Roberts back deep. Deaton back as well. And the biggest game in this part of the country is underway. 
Eric's kick sails out of bounds. I played special teams for 11 years in the pros. I can tell you the special team coach for Wabash is going to go crazy when your kickoff guy kicks the ball out of bounds on the kickoff. And that's going to bring the ball out to the 35-yard line. Good starting field position now for the Tigers. Can they make it pay off? They won the toss. They took the ball. They averaged 40 points a game. Wabash is D, allowing just 14. It is a full throttle, wide open offense. Jason Kirkoff in the backfield with Matt Hunt. Kirkoff with the handoff, running left side and churning his way for a gain of four. This is something that they didn't get last year. I'm talking about DePaul. The one thing about DePaul is that Kirkoff last year had a, had a brace on his arm. He couldn't just drive it in there. Now this year he can. Can he compliment Matt Hunt and take a little bit of pressure off of Hunt, who has been a lot of the offense leading passer and rusher, and he's going to keep it himself here on second down and get the corner and get into little giant territory. This is the one thing we talked about. You cannot let Hunt get to the outside. Get outside. That time, Dante Simpson, number 54, is a defensive end on that side, allowed him to get outside. Once it happens, you're going to have Matt, run, Matt Hunt running for about 10, 15 yards. Starting lineup along the offensive line. They are steady. Campbell and Brooks are the seniors. They will rotate in about eight players on that offensive line. And the wide receiving cores, there's a personal foul on Austin Brown. And that'll tack on 15 more. So a great opportunity early for the Tigers. Their last lead in this series, 7-6 to six at halftime of 2009. Hunt to the air on first down. Pass is complete and a nice gain to Ben Wilson. These guys hurry up, but I got to tell you, what a great throw that time by Matt Hunt. And he let Wilson go, led him to the outside where the defensive back didn't have a chance to make a play on it. Burst and Bowden will try to hem in Hunt, the linebacking core we talked about in the open. They are active and busy, and this little flip out to the left side is incomplete. Trying to get it to Ian. Good. Hanson had pressure. Get your hands up. If you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up. And that time, that's what Hanson did. These linebackers, I said at the beginning, they're very, very active. And the secondary of the Little Giants. Third and three. Crowd coming alive, Hunt. With time, throws complete to Good, who will turn it up and have the first down and be out of bounds at the 15. C.J. McMahon with the tackle. You know what makes this play work is Matt Hunt saw the blitz. He read it, he hesitated, and then he throws the ball to Good on the outside. Watch him. He's sitting in the pocket. He sees the blitz. He knows he only has a short period of time to get rid of the ball, and Good is wide open. Opening drive of the game, first down from the 15. Hunt looking, going to keep it himself to the five, makes a move, and is down near the two. You know when I said you got to keep him inside, contained so he can't get out? Well, just watch this. He's not going to go to the outside. He'll fake Matt Hunt, will number 10, fake to the outside there, and then bam, he's back inside again. He's inside the linebackers. The safeties are all back because they're covering. And he picks up, what, 12 yards on the play? Amazing. First and goal, good to the left. Hunt drops the snap, picks it up, and scurries in for the score. What a start for the Tigers. <laughs> and do you think he's not aware of where he is and what's going on? Mad Hunt drops the ball. Everybody kind of stops on defense. The blocking is perfect up front. He just picks it up and goes in and not even touch until he gets in the end zone. 
What a fortunate break for the Tigers on the road. They cash in the first drive for a touchdown. Adams on for the point after. And it is seven to nothing Tigers. Ball bouncing their way early. I'll tell you on that play, number two, Kirkhoff, Jason Kirkhoff got a great block on the outside. It never allowed anybody to come from uh, Matt Hunt's right hand side where he really wasn't be able to see it because he was looking left the whole time on the play. But you talk about heads up play. Look at Hunt. He's got his head up. He reaches down. He touches the ball. Now he's just looking for a hole. He's got it. No problem. Cloud over Bowden for the final piece of the score. And Matt Hunt and company, a much calmer group than we had seen in years past. And I thought had a little confidence coming into this game. You and I have been talking for three days now, and you said to me one of the first things that you had said about DePaul, the one thing that they cannot do is get behind in this first part of the game. If they can move the ball, score, it'll give them the confidence that they need. And they just went against a very, very good defensive team. Marco Adams to kick it off. Kristen and Avant back deep for the Little Giants. Kristen from the nine. And Ooh. is met and dropped at the 22. Matt Krupe with a nice special teams tackle. Isn't it amazing how a touchdown picks up the spirits? <laughs> I mean, it really does. Connor Rice, senior quarterback from down the road in Indianapolis. 14 touchdowns, just two interceptions. He really knows how to take care of the football. Man, does he ever. This team here has only turned the ball over four times this entire year. Leading the country, four turns in nine games. Second flag of the That'll afternoon. Second, well, third mistake. You had the kickoff out of bounds. Referee today is Wes Davis. Kickoff out of bounds to start the game. You had the personal foul penalty, and now on your first offensive play, you have a false start. This is one of the things that just amazes you. You, you know, the offense is coming on for the very first time. They've already been together on the sideline. They know exactly what they're going to do. They know exactly what they're going to call. And they know the signal, the time. And then they're still offside. I don't understand it. Three penalties for 30 yards early. Rice on first down will hit the deck. And defensive pressure early from the Tigers. Michael Mitch, the senior from Indianapolis, gets his third sack. Offensive line for the Little Giants, finally healthy. Leaf and Sturdivant have been banged up throughout the year, but there we'll get the start today. Keep an eye on Page and Thomas, a pair of very talented receivers. Second down, 19. Little Giants going the wrong way early. Tries for something safe. Was caught and immediately stopped. Thomas Gray, the middle linebacker, with the tackle. Boy, you want to talk about a guy that reads this play perfectly. They're going to try to run a screen to the right. They fake to the left, and that's what Connor Rice did. And then they're going to come back and take a look at I mean, I'm going to tell you what. Gray read this thing perfectly. If he doesn't make the tackle, they had a whole wall in front of him. Loss of one, third and 20. <laughs> Hand off, Johnson, safe play for Wabash. Thomas Gray with another tackle, and it's gonna be a three and out. When you have a third and 20 or around that, you know, I don't think they really diagram that on the play sheet. <laughs> There's not many plays that you wanna do. The one thing you don't wanna do is make a mistake. So run it up the middle, pick up 10, kick the ball away. You've got a, a great defense. Not so much in that first series, but you do. Alex Marr on to punt, 40-yard average on the season. Kirkhoff back deep. And Kirkhoff field it, make the first man miss. 
And Kirkhoff able to slither his way down the sideline and gain nearly 10, and we'll take our first time out. DePaul with a 7 0 lead will get the ball for the second time today. Back in Crawfordsville for the 123rd battle for the Monon Bell. A lot for Wabash to play for. Wabash and Wittenberg tied at 7 and 1 atop the conference. Winner of the conference gets an automatic bid to the field of 32 for the Division III playoffs. But Wittenberg won the meeting in September 24 to 14. And they have the tiebreaker, so all Wabash can do is try to take care of business today and force the hand and see how it plays out. They both win out, and then Wabash would have to hope for an at-large bid. More pressing issues right now. Hunt to Hunt, and Andy gets outside and down the sideline and knocked out of bounds. Penalty flag back at the 40. But back to his little brother Andy and more positive yardage for the Tigers. Will it stick? Well, no. it's on Ben Wilson, number 14. Take a look, he's out to the outside. He's holding. There is a block back. It just came into the picture. But what a great play because you got Matt Hunt looking to his left real quick and then just spun around as fast as he could. Bam, he hits his brother. But the problem when you have a play like that, Ben Wilson, number 14, is the guy that was clipping on the play. You don't have to. He's already by you. You've got to be aware of what's on the field, where your other players are. First down and 13 following the penalty. Empty formation. And Hunt will get the play call from the sideline. Go back to work. Tipped at the line of scrimmage and incomplete. Ethan Burrish got a hand on it. First family, brothers Tyler, Cody, now Ethan, Dylan. They've got another one that they're trying to get in the fold as well. <laughs> How about the Burrishes? There's 28 of those. Second and 13, good with the catch, turns it upfield and steps out of bounds. And here the 44, Austin Brown with the stop. Now also this time now, let's give him credit, Ben Wilson did block. The one thing about these wide receivers, they're big enough that they can block downfield. I mean, this is a very, very good offensive football team. Hunt and the Tigers. Trying to move the chains on third down and seven. Plenty of time down the middle, tipped and incomplete. Wilson went from receiver to DB. It's a good thing he got a hand on it, or that could have been an interception. What Wabash did that time is they kind of faked a blitz. And then you see Connor Ludwig there, number 30. He was moving up to the line of scrimmage. He wasn't blitzing. What he was doing was spying on Matt Hunt. He, was, he is assigned to him. So if Matt Hunt goes one way, he's going with him. Hunter Sego to punt. Kristen will wait at the 10. Low punt, which will take a little giant bounce and kick back and be down. Near the 20. The Each the side settling down. Second offensive ten. possession now for the Little Giants. Did you see what Christian did, the punt return guy, number eight? He's back there. He didn't wave fair catch. He didn't do anything, but he was on the opposite side of the field where the ball was. And so the defensive guys were going to him. Check in with Brad. All right, guys, well, obviously a different feel on the sideline here for DePaul. You know, they've only scored three points since 2010 on this field, this artificial turf, since it was installed. Obviously, not only that, but a lead, 7 nothing. You know, everyone's more relaxed. The whiteboards, the coaches aren't drawing as vigorously. The quarterback, Matt Hunt, sitting more calm this year. It's just a different atmosphere and a great start so far to DePaul, different than what we've seen in the past, guys. And a different start 
for Wabash. We're used to seeing them rip off chunks of yardage running. They haven't been able to do anything in the middle as Panola got stuff. Yeah, well, they had a back last year to 6'12", 700 pounds. He just ran the ball whenever he wanted to. I never saw anything like it last year. It, Mason Zurich, he's yeah. still running, by the way. <laughs> he's still running. It was unbelievable watching that thing last year. It was crazy. Second and nine. And Rice going to go to the air. Sliding catch made by Oliver Page, the sophomore from South Bend, Indiana. First down, Little Giants. Excellent blocking by the offensive line that gave Connor Rice all the time in the world to throw a comeback pattern. Take a look at when you look on the outside, you're looking at Page. Look how much time he has to come back to the ball. Now, number 21 is Baker, who's the defensive back. But when you have that much time to throw the ball, you can pick out anybody you want. Kristen and Page shift to the top of your screen. Nola going to get another carry, looking for a little room. Still driving, but nowhere to go. Surrounded by black helmets, Will Longthorne, the career leader in tackles for DePaul, leading the team this year with 84 entering play today. Defensive tackle, Mitch, number 94. This guy's a little scary when you talk to him. I mean, I've never seen a guy that can open his eyes that wide and just stare at you. He said, they are not going to run the ball up the middle. They are not. And I believe him. I really did yesterday, and I believe him today. Mitch missed last year's game with an injury, came back for a final semester. One more crack for the Little Giants. Panola trying to get wide, can't do it. Nothing working early in the run game for the Little Giants. Mitch and Nelson with the stop. Who was on the tackle? Mitch, number 94. <laughs> this guy, he is everywhere. Take a look at him, watch him. He's on the left of your screen. He's gonna come down the line of scrimmage and make the tackle. Number 94, Mitch. You're talking about this guy's fired up. He was fired up yesterday. Third and eight. Rice. Plenty of time, throws incomplete off the hand of Page. I'll tell you what, if this ball would have been on target, Will Longhorn, number 24, would have intercepted it. Watch this ball. Look at right there, there's Longhorn. That ball couldn't have been caught. He either had it or he's going to miss him, and he missed him. Mar to punt. Kirkhoff waiting. Good kick. Kirkhoff fearless on the return. Gets by one. Can't get by the second. Timeout on the field. DePaul with a 7 to nothing lead. Back inside the Giant Stadium. 23rd battle for the bell. DePaul with the early lead. Wabash, if they win, will get a share of, share of the conference championship and a record eighth straight win in the Bell Series. DePaul trying to get it for the first time since 2008. Bill Lynch now his fourth season and his second tour of duty. But what that means, all those kids he recruited from year one are now seniors. This is by far his best team, and they've calmed down and believe that they're good enough to beat anybody now. It really is amazing. And you listened to him yesterday when he's talking to us. He really had a smile on his face the entire time. He loves his football team because he put it together. Fifth season overall, had a one-year stop earlier in his career, and now is back trying to rebuild the Tigers. Hunt takes the handoff, keeps it himself, trying to get his own guy out of the way. And Matt Hunt is nifty and moves quickly through the pack. Austin Brown with the stop. Well, I got to just, oh, you yeah, just look at Matt Hunt. Watch the move he makes. Not here, not here. Now, he just cuts back to the inside, and Brown had no chance of making the tackle. His own man actually tackled him. He's telling Saunders, get out of my way. <laughs> You're not going to block somebody. Get out. Gain of eight, second and two. He'll try it again. Shimmering up the middle, and Connor Ludwig was there spying, and the spy caught him. Well, Connor Ludwig has been doing this his whole game, and I, I just, his job is, not, he's the leading tackler, but his job is to keep an eye on Matt Hunt. Number 30, watch this. Boom, he sees him, he fills the hole, makes the tackle, stops the first down. Third and one. Jake showing pressure.
Did they tip their hand? What do the Tigers come back with? Hunt continuing to move. Gets it up to the 40. Austin Brown coming in to try to make him pay a price. You know what's amazing about watching Matt Hunt run the football? They know he's going to run. Okay, and they're playing man to man, so they're singled up on all the wide receivers. They're overstacking on the inside to stop Matt Hunt, and they still can't. Down from the 40, looked in the direction of good, incomplete. Good didn't complete the route. He had good going down the sidelines. That was his man, he's going to throw the ball. Watch this, he's waiting, he's looking to his left. Now he sees Good down the field. Good cuts the route off. Hunt gonna keep it himself on second down and 10, looking to get outside and wisely tiptoes out of bounds at midfield. It'll be a Tiger first down. He had Ben Wilson out in front of him again, but I'll tell you what's a, what's a problem for the defensive back. He's out here running. They're watching his head and his eyes about where he's looking to go. Watch this, he'll look, boom, I can see the outside. I got this, I got the first down. Let me get it, get out of bounds. Don't get whacked. Well, I didn't him. have the first down, Yeah, the mark him a yard short, stepped out at the 49. Third and one. Kirkhoff with the first down and more. Cut down by McMahon. Jason Kirkhoff didn't get to play in last year's Bell game. Different offense with him in. Now he doesn't have that brace on his arm, and now he runs with authority. He used to just, with that brace, he just run inside. Now watch him. Now, when we talked to him yesterday, is he quiet? <laughs> He's one of those guys be careful of. Making a little noise here on the swing pass down the sideline. Finally met by a host of Giants. But the Tigers deep in Little Giant territory once again, trying to build on their seven point lead. And what has happened, take a look at it. They're not covering Kirkhoff. They don't have a guy on him because they have to worry about the wide receivers on the outside, Gooden Hunt, and they have to worry about Matt Hunt. So Kirkhoff has got a one-on-one -on -one coverage by a linebacker who cannot keep up with him. Hunt gonna run on first down. Ethan Burrish. Number 10, Matt Hunt on the carry. Texas With the tackle. Got to visit with his parents last night, ran into them in the hotel, Bob and Kathy. <laughs> his father, what a neat guy. He said, they got another one of these guys coming. There's four, he's, a, he's fourth in line, Ethan. Now there's a Seth, there's a little brother that's. Yeah, that you can't talk about because he's here on Purdue visit. To I can't talk about him, but I'm going to talk about him anyway. anyway. I don't care. Second down at seven. Hunt going to look for the end zone. Incomplete. Good coverage out there by Parks. Nolan Ayers was the intended target. Well, listen, let me finish up the Burrish story. Bob's a nice man, but let's talk about Kathy. She's the one who had six children. That's right. This is Ayers on the outside. Take a look at it. Now that's the reason that that's not pass interference because you had number two Parks. He turned to look at the ball. He didn't get his hands up. He didn't touch him, which is a great defensive play. Third down and seven. Hunt going for it all. He's got good and he's got the catch. Touchdown, Tigers. Rich, two things really happened on this play, and they both involved good. Is take a look where he was in the position he was in. He went up and snatched the ball. But the other thing, too, is what Matt Hunt, where he put the ball. There was no chance for the defensive back to knock it down. This was a super play. Good. Will hold for Adams. Snap. Balls down. Kicks away. And on third down and seven, Hunt to Good gets the Tigers their second touchdown of the day. All right. Number 12 is Mr. Ian Good.
but watch where the ball is thrown to. Look at Good. He's already made his turn. He knows exactly where he needs to be. There's just no chance for the defensive back, Pettiford, to, to cover him, but the ball is perfectly thrown. Now, you got to remember one thing. Matt Hunt is only 5 feet 10, so he has a problem looking over the offensive line. But the one thing about him that makes him so good is he knows where all of his receivers are going to end up and where they're going to be. So he's actually thrown to a spot. Nine plays, 72 yards, and the 20-yard payoff for the seniors. Hunt to Good. Good's fourth touchdown catch of the season, and Matt Hunt on that drive. He talked about in the open. Hit him with his arm, hit him with his feet. And Good was really good. What? Coach Morell and company going to have to figure out Way to counter this attack. Kristen's a good answer, and he had a hole. And they get stopped shy of the 30. Can I say something? The only mistake ever made is, an is a not corrected mistake. And I called Will Longhorn, Long Horn, and I apologize for that. And you will not let me make that mistake again, will you? First downs to Paw 8, <laughs> Wabash just one. Little Giants are in an unfamiliar position right now. They're not accustomed to being down. No. Uh, you got a, a late flag on this play? That sure yep. looks like one There's about the 35-yard line. But you talk, this team has always been ahead, After and especially play. in this game, it's been foul. that way for a long time. Unnecessary number 48 of the pole. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. It's Harry Bell. Bell with the personal foul for unnecessary roughness. We talked about this too. Mistakes, penalties, these are mental errors. You cannot do this. Your team is up 14 points. You can't make some stupid mistake on the field and cost your team 15 yards. Not against a team like this. Wabash has not won seven straight in this series for no reason. They're eight and one on the season, and there's a jump. Who moved first? Down. Matt Mitch, Mike's little brother, jump. Was he drawn off by the offense? Offsides, defense, number 78, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, Matt is a little excited because he's a backup. <laughs> it's in the He's already ready to go. But you know, the, the worst part about this thing is that he hit the center and the ball is right in front of him. You can't go anywhere until the ball moves. First down five following the penalty. Rice gonna take a shot and it's a catch and it's all the way down inside the 30. Ryan Thomas got loose. Well, if you're worried about Mr. Connor Rice's arm, don't worry about it anymore. This guy's six foot four. Take a look at the throw that he makes to Thomas. This is right on the money, and there's no chance for the defensive back to make a play. And Baker was beaten. Excuse me, it wasn't Baker, it was Hep. Nola with the carry. Just a couple. Wabash can go quickly when they want to. And I would kind of get away from trying to run up the middle against this team today. Hasn't worked yet. Kristen comes in on offense. He'll be in the slot. Now he'll come in motion. Rice will fake the handoff. And throw a wobbler incomplete at the 15. Page, the intended receiver. Wabash offensively, you know, Rice at the quarterback spot. Nola was 639, hasn't found any room yet. And Oliver Page, the wideout. They call Page their best wide receiver. But again, there's nothing been open to throw the ball down the field. They had that one play that they just threw to Thomas two plays ago. That worked. Third and eight. Rice with time. Pass is caught, turning up, picking up the first down. Thomas with two big catches on the drive for Wabash. First down. And I like the fact that Connor Rice has gone back to Thomas twice now. And he goes to Thomas because Thomas is the one guy that's getting open. 
So if they're gonna if they're gonna leave him alone, then wear the guy out. That was just a nice move from outside back to inside. Hep had no chance to get back out. First and goal at the 10. Nolan trying to find room. Just nothing there. One, two, three, four black helmets. No gate. Yeah, you better think about running against this team and just pass it for now. Shamir Johnson will come in and be the back. Rice going to keep it himself on second and goal. And maybe one, maybe two, escorted out of bounds by Zachary Reichley. Gain of a couple of yards on the play. It'll be third and goal. Well, the one thing that the paw is doing is that they're, all right, if you're gonna, they're gonna give you the two yards, but you're not gonna get the long gainer against these guys. What I like about what they're doing defensively is their outside guys are staying outside. So they're not allowing any of the runners to run wide on them. And they go back inside, that's where they wanna force them and they've been stopping them there. Third and goal, Rice, complete! But short of the goal line. Page makes the catch. Hep saved the touchdown. Yeah, he did. This is a this is a nice throw. Connor Rice is in is in rhythm now, and he's throwing the ball exactly where he wants to throw it. But it's fourth down. Take a look at this. Hep just makes an outstanding play to push him out of bounds. When he pushes Page out, he has no chance to, to turn and extend the ball. Out of bounds at the two. Fourth and goal at the two, and Andrew Tutsi on to try to get the little Giants on the board. Tutsi's kick is no good. Oh, Don Morrell can't believe what he's seeing. Well, for Wabash, it was a victory to hold him to a field goal, and then to have the field goal kicker miss it. He just, just hooks it, just dead hooks the ball. Very quiet in here, my friend. Very quiet. Little Giant Stadium is stunned. 2.02 to go in the first quarter. Let's check in with Matt. Guys, just as Brad was talking about over on the other sideline, how it feels different this year. Obviously, it's a different feel on the Wabash sideline right now. This is a feeling that every single player on this team has not felt before. In fact, the last time Wabash was down 14 points in this rivalry, I was the quarterback. Back to you guys. <laughs> what, what happened that day when you were the quarterback? <laughs> Matt, different perspective about you, my friend. <laughs> Congratulations. A lot of guys wouldn't admit that, man. Well, focus now <laughs> for the Little Giants. They've got to figure out a way to slow down this offense. Paul has looked comfortable from the very beginning. Kirkhoff, and that's a little bit more of the type of defense we're accustomed to seeing. Connor Ludwig with another tackle. Well, Mad Hunt, that time he saw the blitz coming from his right. So when Kirkhoff went up into the hole, normally he would pull that thing out. But when he sees a blitzing, he has no place to go. He'll give it to Kirkhoff and let him get the one or two yards that he can get. Third and three. Got to go. Hunt surveying on the move. And Wisely is going to throw it out of bounds. His brother Andy was in the zip code. You know, this is really awareness by a quarterback. You know, we've been talking about Matt Hunt, and, and rightfully so. But this young man, he looked over the defense. He really delayed on the call. It took, it all, took the clock all the way down to one before he snapped the ball. He thought he had a shot on the outside to his younger brother, Andy, but what happened was he didn't. So when he went out to the outside, you notice he didn't throw down the ball down the middle of the field. He threw it out of bounds. Seagull will punt. 
come the little Giants. He gets it away, and it's a good one. Kristen will make the fair catch near the 32. Wabash with the football after the defense holds the paw to a three and out for a run first offense. If you're the little Giants, you haven't been able to run it up the middle, and you haven't had enough speed to get to the outside. Now, when we talked to their offensive coordinator, what did he say? Craig said to us, he said, well, if they're doing something we haven't seen, we'll adjust. But I can assure you, they're not doing anything they've never seen. These guys have been playing the same defense for a long time. Johnson on first down. And that's a good run for Wabash. Number 21, Jameer Johnson on the carry. Tackled by number 33, Thomas Gray. Gain of about six. This will be second down and four. We talk about Connor Ludwig for uh, Wabash, the defensive line, the defensive linebacker. And when you talk about this guy, Gray, number 33, their middle linebacker, true middle linebacker, this guy covers a lot of ground. Time winding down in the fourth quarter. Dylan Burrish checks in. Wabash. He'll be just to the right of Johnson. Said Rice looking, now going to run, and he's got room. And Rice will step out of bounds near midfield. Well, they went double tight ends with Wabash, and when Rice looked downfield, he only had two guys out in the pattern. When he saw that opening, he didn't even hesitate. That'll get us to the end of the first quarter. The Paws offense has been rolling. A couple of touchdowns and the Tigers in the 123rd battle for the Bonon Bell. Take a two touchdown lead into the second quarter of play. Start of the second quarter, DePaul leading Wabash 14 to nothing. The Giants here at home. 116 times they've played on campuses. Home team 55 in the left-hand column. Away team 53. Tigers hoping to make that 55-54 by the end of the day, but a long way to go. And the ties have it. <laughs> oh, the ties don't have it. <laughs> I thought the ties have. Wabash hasn't been able to find much of a rhythm offensively. They also have a missed field goal. Johnson. Another nice carry on first down. Disappointed he stepped out of bounds. A couple of the best rushes of the afternoon for Wabash. Come on the last two first downs by Shamir Johnson. And if, apparently, if you're going to make any yardage running the football, you've got to get wide of the defensive ends, and that's what they're trying to do. And they're trying to do this with Johnson, number 21. He does get to the outside. Be aware of where you are on the field. Second down and four. Johnson again, and this time the Tigers are ready. Craig Kanaki told us yesterday, if things are working for us, we're not afraid to run the same play multiple times that have just mildly different looks. Well, but if you run the different play different times, the same play different times, and they're not gaining anything to get out of it, take a look at this defensive line. Corey number seven is a big linebacker that's in there. These guys, I'm gonna tell you something, you don't try to run up the middle, you're not going anywhere. Third down and three, they'll go to the air. And a nice pitch and catch from Rice to Page. When you bunch on your defensive linemen and you crowd the line of scrimmage and force them to throw the football, your corners must, and it is a must. Baker and Hep, you've got to play tighter on the wide receivers. You can't give them like that five, 10 yard cushion that you have. Get up on him. Kristen motions on first down. Rice surveying plenty of time and will wisely throw it away. <laughs> I was wondering what was in a quarterback's mind. Maybe we could ask Matt about this. When you take the ball and you run to your left and you look, there's no place to throw the ball. And then you're going to turn around and go to your right and you look up and they're all white shirts. There are no red ones there. 
mean, and he did the right thing. Connor Rice threw the ball out of bounds, but that's got to be a frightening sight. Second down, 10. Rice going to go back to the air quickly. And his most profitable pitch today has been to number five, Ryan Thomas. You're at Hep again, and, and you really, I'm, I'm you got to get closer to these guys. They're not going to throw the ball deep. They haven't done that. So get up on them. You got him in the third down and five, maybe six situation. You've got to crash on, the, on these uh, wide receivers. Another third down. Rice gonna keep it. And he'll be cut down and stopped short. Thomas Gray in the middle with another big tackle for the Tigers. And I think this was a quarterback draw called. It just looked like it, because he didn't even hesitate. Take a look, Connor Rice goes back real quick. He's not really looking to throw the ball downfield. He's looking to run the ball. They've got the middle jammed up, and the linebacker's playing extremely well. Tutsi for his second field goal attempt of the day. This one from 45. Kicks away. And Tutsi is perfect on that one. And the field goal makes it 14 to 3. This second effort much better than the first. Plenty of leg. And three on the board. A 14 to 3, 12 38. Important to the call offense right now to let that defense get a little bit of a breather. You know, that is true. But I, I don't think that these guys are going to change what they do. I mean, it's, it's all about uh, Matt Hunt, about Let's what go, he man. is going to do because he, has, he always has the option to, um, when there's a pass play call, run. And the thing about him, where he has matured more than any, any time, is that when you, you watch him, when he goes back, he doesn't just say, okay, I'm running, because I'm a running quarterback. I'm gonna run right away. He does look off people. He takes his time. They rigged a kickoff. Fielded at the 15. A little bit of room to run. And finally stuffed near the 30, Jack Roberts with the return for the Tigers. Number 32, Jack Roberts on the kick return. DePaul will take over first. First four-year starter in the Bell game for DePaul since Spud Dick and Matt Hunt trying to get a Monon Bell victory. And he knew he'd have to do a lot. He's done it all year. He's thrown it well, run well. Seven for 13, 91, and a big touchdown to good on third down and seven. 54 yards on eight carries and a score on what was a very lucky bounce of the football for him. Yes, I mean, but he doesn't hesitate about anything. Uh, this guy really at 5'10 can see the whole field. Back to the ground game. Lopez with the carry. And Lopez churns his way forward. Number 24, Ramon Lopez. For seven. The carry. Tackled by number 30, Connor Ludwig. You know, you just put a little change of pace in, in the game for you. Lopez is 5'9", 189 pounds, and Kirkhoff is 5'10", 170. So he's a little bit bigger back, take a little bit more punishment, and he can also give the defense a little more punishment, as Henson found out. Lopez pounding into the line. Take a look at Lopez. Now, he knows his Henson's going to hit him, and so is Connor. Ludwig. No run just... Lopez again, and he's out in the open field, cutting back down the sideline, and finally stopped, but not until he's inside the 25, and a flag's down as well. Pettiford saved a score. 
I think they're going to get Pettiford for a face mask. I'm, t I'm telling you what, this is what happens when you're a defense and you are so concentrated on the offensive quarterback running the football and throwing the ball. But you're waiting for Matt Hunt. Just remember now, in this series, Matt Hunt has really not run the ball once. Personal face mask on the defense number five. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Pettiford, you never want to grab the face mask, but he's holding on for dear life right here. Well, yeah, you have to. Look at Lopez. Lopez hits the hole very fast, and then he's got great movement on the outside. Now you're going to see Pettiford right there. He pulls him down by the face mask. On first down, Lopez again. Grinds his Lopez way for a couple. This is one of those deals when you go back as a quarterback, you're going to huddle and you look at Lopez. Want another one? Another one? <laughs> okay, just give it to me. I can down, handle it. <laughs> Lopez just a sophomore. Nice change of pace from Kirkhoff. This is a running game from DePaul we haven't seen in recent years. Hunt. Knocked down at the line. Batted down by Bowden. Let me tell you something. We've talked about everybody on this offense. And just take a look at what happens here. Bowden's going to get up and knock the ball down. That Hunt is good. Remember now, he's only 5'10". But the one thing about this offense, when you, when you look at it, we have not talked about the offensive line. These guys are doing a terrific job. They're opening up the holes at the point of attack which is something they hadn't done in the past. Another third and long. Show Blitz now back out. Hunt with time back in the end zone. Incomplete. Too tall for good. We'll send out Marco Adams, school record holder. 34 career field goals. Also has the single season record this year with 14. And to six for the is number six, Marco Adams. Groupie will snap it. Good will hold it. And the Tigers get three more. They answer a little giant field goal with a field goal of their own. Ian Good is the holder. Did you see how fast he got that ball down? The, the ball was snapped high, let it down, kick is good. Beautiful. Seventeen to three here in the second quarter, one hundred and twenty-third battle for the bell. Let's check in with Brad. Yeah, guys, something to keep an eye on. Matt Hunt's been uh, walking off the field the last couple of possessions. His right arm, his throwing arm, holding it down by his side. Trainers have talked to him. Haven't really done any exercises or anything. And you know, you saw that last overthrow of Good in the end zone. Just something to keep an eye on right now. No one seems to be too concerned, but he's definitely holding that arm uh, to the side a little bit to protect it. That's well, one piece that cannot be removed from this offense because his backup, Jake Lasky, is 0 for 4 on the season passing. So just to let you know, uh, it's Hunt uh, bust can for I DePaul. Say sure. Hunt may not, he may not have to throw. He can still run. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and you got also, you got Lopez, you got Kirkhoff. They're not hurting. Low line drive from Adams. Kristen is dangerous in the open field. Finally ridden down from behind. But not until he gets it up near the 45. And that's a spark the little Giants need. Brian Prince with the special teams tackle. You know, when you kick a ball this short, everybody, you got guys, you got to, you're in a lane. I did this for a long time. You're in a lane. You've got to stay in your lane. And what happens is that ball bounces real quick, and when the return guy grabs it, he's already at the wall. And once he gets through the wall, there's only one guy left to stop him, and that was Prince. Or Price, excuse me. Rice to Padola on first down. Wabash will try the middle and get three. Did I say earlier there's not much going on up the middle? Gain of four, this will be 
card may gain of three. This will be second down and seven. But you've got to be able to run this football against this defense because this defense is really pretty good. If you can't run the ball, you're really not going to be able to throw the ball where you want to throw it. Panola again trying to get outside on second and seven. Sheds a tackler. Able to stand up and work his way through Brooks Hepp. That was a very nice run by Panola. I mean, he knew that he was going to get hit. He just said, man, I'm not going out. They got knocked out of bounds. He didn't run out of bounds. Under 10 to go in the half. Third and four. Rice going to try to keep it, spins out of a tackle, and will be stopped two yards short. Pete Nelson, the senior, with the stop on Rice. No, on that, you take a look at the coverage that time for DePaul. Everyone was covered. Connor Rice had absolutely no place to throw the football. And they're going to run a fake. And Wabash is going to get the first down and a lot more. Step, snapped it to Jones. And Jones and the Little Giants are going to have a first down at the Tiger 25. And here's another thing, when you look at special teams, you know, nobody, everybody's going up wide. They're not looking at the, at the people in the backfield. You're looking at the punter. The fake the punter makes afterwards, that's an afterthought. That's just some acting. But I'm gonna tell you, that is a great call. You, you need to get this thing moving. You need to have some kind of a spark. They just got it. The spark is good. The Little Giants need some points to go with it. Johnson will be the back. That has energized his home crowd. Johnson trying to get outside. Tackled by Thomas Gray, the econ major, who wasn't sure he was going to play college football. His mother advised him, give it a try. <laughs> He, and he does. He attributes everything to his mother. His mother really talked him into, hey, just see what the, see what happens. I mean, and this guy is a great player. He's a middle linebacker, and he plays tough. Johnson got two. Panola the back. Second down and eight. Panola trying to find room up the middle. Slips out. Good physical run by Panola and the Little Giants. You look at this Panola, I'm, I'm telling you, when he's getting ready to get hit, he just forearmed the defensive man that was coming at him. First foul, face mask, number 10 in the defense. Half the to the goal, first down. Zachary Reichley with the face mask. Half the distance, we'll put it at the 10. First and goal. And Coach Bill Lynch is saying to his players, we, they don't need any extra help in there. Panola, and they're going to flip it back. And Rice going to block. Kristen, who gets down inside the five, they stop him at the one. This is a funny guy. We talked to Christian yesterday. He said, "Why do you see me? I like to care. I don't, you know, much care about carrying the ball. I'd rather catch it." I said, "Well, you don't have any touchdowns receiving." He says, "Yeah, I know, I know that, but he does. <laughs> the guy can run the football, and he still didn't get his touchdown." Second down and goal. Pinola in, standing up. Touchdown, Wabash. Panola looks like he twisted his ankle as he went into the end zone. 
But you look, you look at Panola when he when he runs, when he dips his, <laughs> boy, I'm gonna tell you, he gets whacked. And he'll be tended to. Tetsy off a low snap. And, and a good hold from Kristen, able to knock it through to make it 17-10, and the fake punt near midfield pays off. Touchdown difference between DePaul and Wabash, thanks to Matt Panola's ninth touchdown of the year. Examination from the training staff, looking at his knee, he got the touchdown. 57 yards in eight plays. They were working on his left leg, and it was his, it really, and it was his knee. He, uh, a tough kid, boy. Tough, tough man, sorry. And obviously he doesn't have a mohawk. No, he, he, he didn't go for the mohawk. Let's check in with Matt. Hey guys, down here on the Wabash sideline, you could feel with that fake punt and corresponding touchdown that followed up, you could definitely feel the momentum shift. And you have to remember, even though in the recent history of this rivalry, Wabash hasn't been down much. They had two come from behind wins in the playoffs last year, as well as in the first game of this season. If there's any quarterback that can lead this team back, it's probably Connor Rice. May rig to kick it away. Short kick. And it'll be up to the 30 where Pat Lee or DeMarco Henry just got walloped. DeMarco Henry did the smart thing. It was a short kick. He took the, he took the short kick and he said, you know, I'm going to go dancing around. I'm going straight up the field. And he takes a shot, but he got as much yards as he possibly could get. He's not really, when you take a look at it, he just, when he gets hit, he gets whacked. But, ooh, now that, that's, a bad, that's a bad play. That should be a flag. Didn't get one. No. Lopez will start as the back next to Hunt. And Hunt and Lopez not quite on the same page, and they avoid disaster as Ludwig was in the backfield. He and Jalen Alston. It's a good thing that ball stayed in the hands of Matt Hunt. Well, Matt Hunt, I think he was going to take the ball out. It just looks like it, and they don't have the exchange down. And Matt didn't want to give it to Lopez. He wanted to keep it. Hunt did. But hey, Hunter Ludwig was there anyway. It didn't matter. Second down and 12. Hunt tries to get going. Odin right there to stop him. And the Little Giants feeling pretty good about themselves right now. I'll tell you, that 91. Take a look at 91 on the outside. That's Alston. He's a guy that just makes sure that Matt Hunt just runs up the middle and doesn't get back to the outside. This is the one thing that they wanted him to keep him from getting out. Third and 12. Hunt trying to set up a screen. Lopez has it, and Bowden has him, and the Tigers will have to punt. Boy, you talk about a great defensive play. Look at this. He just ran right through the blockers. He go to punt. Kristen back for the Little Giants. And this will take a Tiger bounce. And roll all the way to the 26. And 
I know this is a big weekend around the country for all of the DePaul and Wabash and alums. In Send us your Lee party LED photos. MononBellTV at gmail.com. Right, and then we can put them up on the screen and Paul can critique them. Fair? Well, I've been with a few parties, and I mean, I'm not an authority, but I can, you know. But you are an expert. That's yes, right. Rice, and a throw on first down. And the completion to Thomas will be for a gain of nearly 10. I'll tell you, this full first half, it's been pitching catch between Rice and Thomas. Thomas just gets himself open. Another first down. Clock winding to five minutes to go in the first half. Page in motion. Panola, leg seemingly fine, trying to find a little room outside. Only a couple, Zach Williams with the tackle. He's a better straight in the head runner than he is a side-by-side -side runner. He's trying to work his way out of this thing, and I know his, his right leg is bothering him, or his left leg, excuse me. Second and eight. There's nobody covering on the left-hand side. But Rice has a wide open page who has to wait for it, but will make the catch at the 35, and that'll allow the Tigers to get back. Gray makes the stop, but if Rice could have led Page, that would have been an easy score. You talk, this is really a blown coverage. Take a look on the outside. You're gonna just see Page go down. Nobody covers him. The safety comes up, the quarter comes up, they bite. They don't come back on Page. Again, if this ball was thrown on target, he's gone. Gain of 35. What did Matt say from down on the field? The one guy that can bring him back, it's Connor Rice. Four catches, 59 yards now for Page. First down, Panola, a little bit of room to the outside. Stiff arms his way inside the 20. Panola gonna need a little help up. He's That's trying to play through it. No, he can't, that's enough. Boy, he's a gutsy player, I'll tell you. When he saw that opening, he's gone. Johnson comes in as the back. He'll get the carry. Not much doing. One of the things you have to take into consideration when you look at this offensive line, as opposed to the defensive line, it, it, these, it's like a 35 pound swing on the average. And that's tough. You're playing, you know, these guys are grinding at you all day long. They've been trying to run the ball up, for, up the middle for almost two quarters. And it really hasn't worked that well. They're getting back to the outside. But these big offensive linemen are just leaning on these smaller defensive linemen. Dylan Burrishin will be the lead back. And now Wabash is going to call a timeout. First timeout called in the half. And an opportunity for the Little Giants to try to get a touchdown and tie this one at 17. And they're not going to get away from running the football. You think, you know, that Connor Rice, even though one of the things that Wabash is doing is when they're splitting their guys out, the pause only putting man to man on the outside, and they're giving him way too much space. You ask for party pictures, Paul, here you go. The telestrator out. These guys are right here. Oh no, we've got, we've got more coming. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. Orlando, Raleigh, Cromwell, Chicago. Chicago. Who do they like to party in Chicago? Oh, now see? That is great. I like the little guy. Look at that. Perfect. The little guy seems to be the only one that knows where he is. <laughs> Wonderful scene here. This is a fun afternoon. It really is. Yes, the alumni 
people for this for both of these schools. It's just phenomenal. They have some parties in here. On first down, Rice pulls it back, throws, incomplete in the hands of Thomas momentarily. And then Hep able to get a paw in there and strip it away. Boy, this just looked like the perfect pass. And you got Thomas one-on-one -on, -one on the outside on Hep. Watch this. Throw. Should have hit him right in the gut. You cannot drop that one. He's caught everything else today. He hadn't dropped the ball. Back to the air on second down. Rice trying to get outside and will throw it away. Number 19, Cal Rice's pass fails out of bounds. That'll bring up third down. Pressure. Kulf had pressure for the Tigers. You just take a look at this. You know, when someone something breaks down in the middle, you got a defensive lineman coming in to the out inside. You've got to get rid of the ball. And what I like about Connor Rice is didn't even hesitate. As long as you throw the ball and you're out of the pocket, you throw the ball beyond the line of scrimmage, you're fine. Third and ten. Rice. Going to keep it. And will be hit and stopped by Gray. Gray has been all over the field for the Tigers. Fourth down coming up. Wabash. Well, when you look at this, Connor Rice, he, he breaks and he sees that he's got an opening. Watch how fast the linebackers and the defensive backs get to him. Bang, he's now in the open, but it all closed. And the reason it closed is because Thomas Gray, number 33, hammered him. Tutsi one for two on field goal attempts today. From 30. Blocked! The kick is blocked by Will Longthorne. The field goal is blocked by number 24. What a turn with two minutes to go in the first half. Fake punt, Wabash. They ended up getting a touchdown. Field goal tried by Wabash. Wabash blocked. Take a look at this block. Longthorne comes in and nobody really touched him. I just can't believe that somebody else other than the kicker ended up getting the ball. That Excuse me, it wasn't the kicker, it was Christian. Clear. Christian. The holder. Wisely scurrying back. Bill Lynch likes it. <laughs> Tigers with the ball. And still. With a seven point lead, two minutes to go in the half. Completion to good. And we've had a few momentum swings. At the start of this one, it was all Tigers. Following the fake punt, the touchdown. Momentum went on the Wabash side. And now following that block, I think there's a little shock for the men in red. I think so too. And what, what they're doing is they're, they're allowing DePaul the short passes. And I wouldn't do that. Again, complete. From Hunt that out to his brother Andy. Andy Hunt, tackled by number five, Yolan That'll be a first down. The ball, know, all three timeouts remaining. Andy is a sophomore, the youngest of, of the Hunts, and you know the awareness of where you are in the field. He caught the ball, got the first down. He knew where he was, knew where the first down marker was. Hunt stepping up, caught, spun, and dropped. And Evan Hansen. I'll tell you, Evan Hansen, take a look at this. He's blocked at the line of scrimmage, and he's being blocked by number two, Kirkhoff, as the offensive back. And Kirkhoff didn't get a piece of him. Hansen just ran right through him. Watch this. What a great play. They stayed on him. Simpson and Burrish in there as well. But give credit to Evan Hansen on that one. And the paw will burn their first time out. Stop the clock with 
32 to go in the half. In Bloomington, Indiana, leads number 10, Penn State, 17 to 14. Also in the fourth quarter. Wabash called the timeout. Yeah, I don't down to one. Yeah, right? I wouldn't think that uh, the Paw would call it because they just want to get out of here. They got to take, you know, got some points up. Just get out of there and let's regroup. But offensively, Wabash did regroup. Don Morrell, Bill Lynch. Second and 18 following the sack. After seven straight years of losses in games that were essentially over by halftime, DePaul would be happy. Oh. Incomplete down the sideline. Ben Wilson was out there and was open. Oh, you talk about overshooting the target. Ben Wilson was wide open down the sidelines, and that was touchdown. The ball was just overthrown. You know, you just when you see that pass in the one that Hunt threw in the end zone high, is he having a problem with his arm? Now take a look at Wilson. Pettiburg's got beat on the outside. The ball's just overthrown. Lopez gets the carry on third down and 18. Ethan Burrish <laughs> with the tackle and trying to take the ball away. Wabash burns their final timeout with 119 to go. You don't think that they would fake a punt here, do you? They just thought to put that in your mind. No, not no. if I'm the Tigers, I no. think. Being up at the half by seven. Well, you got a minute and 19 after this punt, so people probably about a minute and a minute, half time. Now for Bill Lynch, he's got a, a very good team. This is an opportunity to try to break this seven game winning streak by Wabash. The Little Giants are victorious here today. That sets a record. Nobody's ever won eight in 123 years of doing this. Bill, you know, when you look at Coach Lynch and when you talk to him, you just realize that, you know, it's, it's a team that he put together four years ago. And it's coming to fruition now. And he just knows that they're capable of beating this team. And the problem, he said, don't make mistakes, mental errors, penalties, and turnovers. Siegel gets it away. And a bit of a tiger bounce. Then the Little Giants will take over at the 27. Connor Ludwig is on the field. That's their linebacker. And he got hurt, I think, just trying to avoid hitting the punter. This is a big, this is her leading tackler. Number 30 is Connor Ludwig. There, oh, he got kicked. He's gonna be all right, I think. But it's not gonna feel good for a no, while. No, for a long time, it's not gonna feel good. You gotta get him up walking around. I can't believe it because he hit the kicker leg, but I can't believe that the kicker didn't fall down and fake, you know, because he did get hit. You're going to have to visit with Hunter as a former punter and tell him, listen, if anybody even <laughs> comes within a whisker of oh, you, you've got to hit the deck. Go down. Ludwig, senior from down the road in Indianapolis. <laughs> Talked to so many of these kids. He said he'd be all right, and he will be. He's an econ major, and he and Burrish visited with them last night. Ethan, we said, what are you going to do tonight? I want to make sure you guys stay out of trouble. And they tell us, well, that won't be a problem because we have a nine-page paper to write that's due tonight at midnight. So we've got about four or five more hours of work to do, so we've got our afternoon all planned out. <laughs> I mean, we just... Now, there's another example. You think the guys in the school, the teachers would say, you know what, you got it tonight before game. 
We'll give you an extra day. No, no. Midnight last night, the paper had to be done. Rice going back to work. Another completion to Thomas. Rice is fast, completed two number five. Ryan the Giants Thomas. out of timeouts. DePaul's trying to rush with just three guys, and they're not getting there. This offensive line, they got five big guys up there. Watch what's happening at the middle. Connor Rice has got all the time in the world to throw the ball. One of these, you've got to get put some pressure on him. Another quick completion Rice to Ryan fans. Thomas. Slips out of bounds. And that's another one as college. You got three rushing eight in coverage. I mean, there's just too much room. They're giving up too much room. And I mean they DePaul. Vanola the back. Rice. Gonna keep it. And run out of bounds. He'll get a couple. Stops the clock. 37.2 to go, first half. Game of two, this will be second down and eight. No, this actually is a, a great place to, to run a screen because they're all backing off. You got eight guys backing off. You're going to have some room between the defensive line and the linebackers. And all you got to do is let those three guys in front go through. And then let the line go down and block the linebackers. Rice rolling throws complete and slipping out of bounds. Oliver Page with another catch. And not much coming off the clock. First down, 32.6. You know, when you take a look at watch Connor Rice. Now, Connor Rice is a left handed quarterback, so he's rolling to his, his strength. And he fired. <laughs> There's no way the defense can get near it. From midfield, Rice thrown on the run and sails it over the head of Thomas. And Thomas again was wide open. Nobody within 10 yards of him. And they're going to have a penalty against Wabash. Is that a bell ring? The bell rings all day for an entire week. We knew that coming in. What we didn't know and we learned is that if you win, it rings for a week after. Because <laughs> yeah. we're never here after. No, absolutely not. Here we go. After the play, personal foul, and that's a roughness. Skin down. Skin down. Well, that was it was good up until we lost who the guy was. It was unnecessary <laughs> roughness by the entire team. Second and 25. And now I think we had an issue with the clock not starting. Wes Davis. 29 seconds. 29. I'm gonna put a little time back on. Put it up to 29. Hold on, second down. Spinning around, not much. And that might just be enough for the little Giants in this first half. Yeah, when they take that thing and just, you know, we've tried a couple of things. They didn't work. We had a penalty. Yeah. That's... All right, let's get out of here. And that take it, and DePaul yeah, will take a lead into the locker room. But the little Giants, as you would expect, they're not eight and one for no reason. They are a very good team and a fake punt call and executing it all the way in for a score. Got it to 17 to 10 and this is played out as we expected. And here's Brad, Bill Lynch. All right, coach, seven point lead at the half. Has to feel good to be up. Yeah, it really was uh, two different quarters. We kind of dominated the first quarter and they dominated the second quarter. And and uh, but uh, we just got to keep playing. I I'm proud of the way our guys are hanging in there. and. We're playing hard. We just got to make some plays because they're an awful good defensive football team. Well, all three phases, right? How big was that blocked field goal? That's huge. Um, but, the, you know, in a game like this, as you well know, there's going to be a lot of things happening in that third and fourth quarter. All right. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Thank you. All right, guys. Bill Lynch and the Tigers with a seven 
point lead here at the half. Halftime at Little Giant Stadium, and we've had a little bit of everything. Made field goals, missed field goals, blocked field goals. What else do you expect from a bell game? We're at halftime between DePaul and Wabash. At Wabash College, academics come first, but they also offer a top-notch athletic experience. For athletes looking to satisfy their competitive spirit beyond high school, Wabash College offers a first-class NCAA Division III experience. And it's not just on the gridiron. For the student athlete, everything begins in the classroom. Uh, academics here at Wabash are first and athletics do come second. Um, but with that being said, not only do the students recognize that's the priority, but the faculty and the coaches as well recognize that. We get guys that are serious students and they pick Wabash College for the academic challenge and the athletic challenge we present. Well, for all the programs that Wabash College offers on the academic side, athletics is able to equal the quality delivery to our student athletes. And whether it's in competition or preparing for competition during the off season, uh, our student athletes are prepared for a total experience here at Wabash. For the young man sitting at home that, that wants to be challenged uh, as a scholar, and an athlete uh, secondly there, you know, this is why you come to Wabash, because we're going to show you how to do it. We're not just going to talk about it. Uh, we're going to walk you through the steps of doing those things. We're going to put you in front of professors and staff that have guided young men here for 30 years to, to make that happen. Just the opportunities that presents itself to be a leader on campus, to um, have second to none academics, and then have a great athletic experience, which is what I've had and it offers this to everybody. I've had this first-hand experience where I've had this second-to-none education and academic side of things at Wabash and have these amazing athletic opportunities while still every single day being challenged in the classroom. And I don't know if you could really find that anywhere else. Starting with my freshman year, uh, the college did a great job of formatting the curriculum so that we had classes that were completely discussion-based. Um, we talked about a lot of uh, philosophical questions just like, what does it mean to be a man? What is life? Those first initial classes here set up set me on a track uh, to where I was able to really explore deeper questions throughout my entire time at Wabash. It's incredible when I see our student athletes graduate from Wabash College most of the time with a job and climb immediately into their professional world uh, prepared by what they've learned every day at this institution. You're able to continue at sports that you enjoy and excel at and you're able to have a complete experience as you transition from home base, if you will, to what you're going to do in later life. We'll come back with more halftime activities, including first half highlights and stats after this timeout. You're watching the 123rd Monon Bell game on Access TV. DePaul University gives students a first-class liberal arts education. For nearly two centuries, DePaul has enriched students' lives inside and outside the classroom. Hi, I'm Dylan Prentice. I'm from Gaithersburg, Maryland, and I'm a senior vocal performance major. Hi, I'm Derek Truby. I'm from Germantown, Maryland, and I'm a senior vocal performance major. And here's to you, old DePaul. Since 1837, young scholars from around the nation and around the world have come to Greencastle, Indiana to live and learn. DePauw students benefit from an uncommon mix of small classes with full professors, unique opportunities to intern and study abroad, and to live and learn in a vibrant community. That 180-year-long tradition continues today. When I chose DePaul, um, what got me was the weekend I came for my audition as a music student um, and the attention that I was given. I was given a full schedule of something to do. I was asked to go to classes. I was invited to, to follow students around. Feeling like you're a part of something before you are is what made me really feel at home at DePaul before I even accepted. The fact that I've been able to sing for composers and be a part of just amazing opportunities here through the music school and um, in the College of Liberal Arts, uh, that's really bar none for me and has added such a huge thing to my education. Hi, my name is Sarah Redman and I am from Zionsville, Indiana. 
I'm a communication major and studio art minor. DePaul is special because you get a close-knit community, but you're also pushed to take steps outside your comfort zone. One of the reasons why I chose DePaul was because of the winter term opportunities. And this past January, I spent two weeks in Greece studying art history and architecture. Hi, I'm Carlos Rodriguez. I'm from Ponce, Puerto Rico. I'm majoring in Romance Languages and Political Science. Uh, last summer, I went on a study abroad trip to Italy for about two weeks. It was one of the best times of my life. And one of the best parts about it was that I actually got to connect with people at DePaul that I'd never met before. And I like that DePaul gives me the opportunity to go explore whatever I want to do. I'm John Jessup from South Bend, Indiana, and I'm an English major. Right now, I'm actually in a one-on-one -on -one class, an independent study with a professor, and I'm writing a memoir. Uh, I don't think very many other schools would offer that opportunity, and even that one-on-one -on -one interaction is, is simply incredible. And I think for any student that comes here, you can really customize it and make it what you want it to be. This opportunity at Tapa uh, gave me an opportunity to sort of see the world uh, in a lot of different ways and understand the value of education and what it can do. Fight, fight unto the end for all Tapa. Hoorah! <laughs> Seventeen to ten at the half. DePaul and Wabash. Well, we had a little bit of everything, and what we thought would be a highly competitive game, and it has played out just that way. First quarter it was all Tigers. And Matt Hunt, he, this guy just running with the football and throwing the ball, he was on target for everything. That was his quarter. You take a look at you know this guy when he steps back to throw the ball. If he doesn't see anything right away, he's gone. Now here's the touchdown. They center the ball to Matt Hunt, he drops the ball, but he's, it's awareness because he's looking downfield. Picks up the ball, scores a touchdown. Then this one to Ian Good. Ian Good is in perfect position, but the throw was outstanding. That's little, little 14. Little Giants come back in the second quarter. Tutsi with the field goal after missing one earlier. A little special teams magic here from Kristen. Yeah, Kristen, this guy, I mean, he just loves it. He said, I love to catch the ball. <laughs> he also really likes to run. But the one thing he'd rather do is catch the end, run the ball, and get whacked. Fake punt here, handoff to Jones. And Steven Jones really ignited the crowd in the sideline for Wabash. Yeah, he did. You know, this is something where it's a mental error. And then Panola, this guy here is tough. He's, he is the toughest runner I've seen this afternoon. And he got hurt twice in this game so far, but he still finished the half. Numbers from the first 30 minutes. Total yards evening out. First downs dead even at 13-13. And Wabash doing a nice job on third downs, converting 50%. There was one time in first downs, it was like eight for DePaul and one for Wabash. Wabash put it together in the second quarter. That's why these numbers are they're so close. But you're looking at 259 yards against this defense in the first half. That's a lot of yardage, especially against Wabash's defense. Something to keep in mind, DePaul won at the opening toss. Elected to receive, they did get a touchdown out of it. That means the Little Giants are going to get the ball to start the second half and an opportunity to try to tie this one up early in the third quarter. Yeah. We'll come back to Little Giants Stadium. It's been quite a few years since the Tigers had something to cheer about, like in their spot so far today. Beautiful fall afternoon, temperature pushing up into the high 40s. No wind to speak of, perfect day. Pushing up? Pushing up, yeah. I was gonna say use a <laughs> tumnel, but I didn't wanna lock you up. So no. looking at the trees, I was, you know. I remember years ago, Jay Randolph used it on me in, in New England. It's a tumnel afternoon, I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> nice, a nice autumn day. <laughs> yeah. Earlier on the week on campus, Paul, you're wondering about who's ringing that bell and what they're doing, <laughs> here's your answer. That goes constantly, folks. All day, all night, Marianne. I don't think when they stop at 11, they said they yeah. take a break until seven in the morning. Yeah, and those are all freshmen that are doing that. Is that hazing? And no, no, that's yeah, called no, it's paying not. your dues. You paying your dues, it's not hazing. Okay. And, and then they sleep with it. They don't want somebody from DePauw to come down and take it. Well, you know, our director, Andy, he actually, we had to stop 
just for him the other night so he could ring the bell. I think that has to be part of your experience, and that bell is no joke. That's nope. not something you just swing with the wrist. You need an nope. arm, a bicep, a tricep, a shoulder. I mean, you got to get some oomph to make that thing move. Can I tell you one other thing that happens? I won't tell you who they are, but when whoever wins this game afterwards, somebody, they drink beer out of that thing. Now listen, before you go there, we got another half of football. Why the Monon Bell Trophy, the Monon Railroad, Crawfordsville and Greencastle, 1932, the railroad donated the 300-pound brass and cast iron bell, and now you get to party on the tracks. How good is that? Whew. As long as the train doesn't come, that's not so bad. You're fine. You'll hear it. It's big and it's loud. <laughs> they stole the bell. You can't hear the train. <laughs> now, that's not true. But they have stolen the bell from schools. <laughs> yes, so we, you get the whole scoop on it. How funny were the kids? Will Longthorne, the senior, had the block field goal in the meetings. You asked him, so, you know, what would what an opportunity to win this game mean to you? Wouldn't they had, you know, very nice statements about it. It'd be a career-defining game and something we haven't done in seven years. It'd be great to bring it back to campus and then... Longthorn, his glasses on, looking very scholarly. He said, you know, I, we're fortunate enough to win. I don't, I don't even know what to do. I guess we go to their sideline and get the bell. Oh, I hadn't really thought of that. <laughs> but they, you know, it really is kind of funny, though. It, and that's what happens, is that when, whoever wins the bell, they go, and if the bell is over here, which obviously is at Wabash, that they all come over. The team comes over through all of their team to take the bell back. Now, there got to be some things said. And some things done. That feels a little personal, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And then, you know, I this is one of those deals when you go get the belt, keep your helmet on. Sure. And and the chin strap buckled <laughs> yeah. tight. <laughs> and they brought a lot of extra guys. Now, see these guys down there on the sideline? Mm -hmm. One of these guys got engaged at halftime. Let's check in with Brad. So, guys, we really are looking at a scenario potentially where the bell could change hands for the first time in eight years. Now, what would actually happen, you know, if you've seen the movie Braveheart, you want to think, yeah, one sideline running over to the other, maybe short of swords and spears and all that good stuff. That used to kind of happen. Again, no weapons, but fisticuffs, all that kind of thing. So about 20 years ago, they decided, enough, we're not going to do that anymore. So the bell will actually move with about five minutes to go in the fourth quarter if the game is tied or really closely in doubt. They're actually going to put it over closer to the DePaul locker room, so it's a much more civil handoff should that happen. So if the game is tied with about five minutes left, let's look for that. The athletic directors for both schools, they'll be in touch with one another and decide when and if they want to move the bell. So no Braveheart, but still a pretty fun uh, exchange of the bell should DePaul win. Here's Matt. Guys down here with Wabash head coach Don Morrell. Coach, a little bit of a different feel this year than in years past. What's got to change in the second half to come back from seven points down? Uh, we got outplayed. I think uh, clearly we tried to kick a field goal. They had like six people in our backfield. Uh, we simply got out played first drive we made a couple horrible mistakes kicked the ball out of bounds had a personal foul that's 50 yards and penalty essentially so uh, we got to play penalty free and uh, try and swing the momentum here and we'll, we'll be in good shape if we can do that good luck in the second half coach will longthorne well now we'll have to tell him that you don't actually have to go over to that sideline now brad can coach him up over there if it ends up going the tigers <laughs> way but still a long way to go on this one he had the blocked field goal one of the six as coach said in their backfield there were a few uh, black helmets in there when you're looking at it like we are kind of impartial in the middle you know there's a couple guys i guess when you're a coach it multiplies by three or four you know they had a team and a half in our backfield track <laughs> field goal how, how do you expect us to get one through well you know when you see one guy in there and he blocks the field goal you know that okay Somebody blew an assignment. But when the entire line blows an assignment, I mean, there's nothing you can do except yell for help. Well, Brad had also talked about the trainers taking a look at Matt Hunt and him is holding his right arm a little bit lower. We'll see if how he holds up. He's missed a couple throws today, but he's been very good. He's completed some big passes, big one on third down and seven to good for the 20 yard touchdown pass. 10 of 19, 100 yards. He's also rushed 11 times for 54, and he has both of their touchdowns. And so, so far, the script we thought would happen, which rarely does when you come to doing a game like this, it's really kind of played out like we thought coming in. Yeah, you know, you knew, we thought really that DePaul had a pretty good chance of winning this football game. 
at least playing well in it. And they have not disappointed anyone. They've played extremely well. They just got to make sure that on pass coverage, especially, they don't give these wideouts, the guys like Page and Thomas, Christian, that as much room as they've been given, they got to get played a little bit tighter. They're not throwing the ball deep. They really haven't tried to throw the ball deep. They've just thrown your eight, nine yard passes that are beating them up. They've got to tighten that up. Bill Lynch in the Indiana Football Hall of Fame. A very good career coach at Butler, Ball State, Indiana. Stop at DePaul and then came back. And he really seems like a guy who's comfortable in his situation and is joy enjoying every part of what this head coaching job entails. Never hesitated after when they first got here and they met the kids and they not kids, the guys. They met these guys and they said, you know what? This is really Kansas where I belong. Off the half four. <laughs> what did he, he say? You know, you they made, yeah. renewed my faith in young people. Yeah, both the coaches said that, you know, when you deal with these kids, how hard they work in school, how respectful they are, how much fun they are to coach. He said it's just an absolute joy to be around them and meet their parents and all the other things to get at different levels just let go by the wayside. Well, this kick by Adams will be down in the back of the end zone by Kirby Cox. So no Drake Christian. We we saw him with a nice run down near the goal line. Didn't see him at the end of the first half returning a punt. Not back there in his usual spot to return a kickoff. So we'll have to get a report and see what's up. Christian Rice, 12 of 18, very efficient, and a guy who does not take chances with the ball. No, and that's the part that they really, again, going into this game, in the entire nine games of the year, they've turned the ball over four times. They, that leads the nation. Start of the second half. Rice gonna go back to the air and hit the tight end, Sammy Adams. And he'll lunge forward for a gain of 10, Reichley with the tackle. Well, Sammy Adams can number 80, gets off the line of scrimmage, and there was nobody around him. I mean, you talk about a great read by Connor Rice. Take a look at this throw. Look at number 80. He's all by himself. You don't see a white shirt until after he catches the ball. They're not even close to him. Nola trying to get outside, stops, turns up, nothing doing. There's a guy you just don't want going, what, east and west? You want him going north and south all the time because that's where his power is. When he, when you get Panola going to the outside, like here, he doesn't have any strength. To the air on second and 10. Another open receiver, another easy completion to Thomas. I just don't understand. Now, Baker's going back and looking at the defensive backfield. He's got his hands up. Like, when, am I supposed to get help out there? you got to know who you are. You've got to plaster these guys, and that's the expression that the coaches use. you got a wide receiver that comes out. You can't give him on second down and 10. You can't give him a 10-yard cushion. Gain of eight, third and two. Panola with the second effort gets a little giant first down. That's where Panola's strength is. It's going straight ahead. Take a look at the blocking of the line. Coming down on the inside. Now you got your linebackers and defensive linemen. Health is there, number 26, but you make the tackle after three yards. Panola, I tell you what, this guy can go straight ahead very well. Been tended to by the trainers looking at his knee in the first half. No ill effects back in and running here in the second half. Rice fakes the handoff, rolls out. Pitch and catch. This one to Drake Christen, so he's back in the game and back in action for the Little Giants. I'm going to tell you, roll, Rice rolls out. He's left-handed. He rolled to his left. He didn't even have to throw this ball. He could have picked up 10 yards or more. When he cleared the defensive end, there was nobody in his face, but he saw a wide receiver open. Watch this. When he runs out, look at Connor. There's nobody out there. There's no white shirts. They're way outside. If he kept the ball, he picks up 10 yards. 
Nola on second down, being strung out down the line and able to turn it up for a couple. Are they listening to me at all? No. Run him straight ahead. I mean, this guy's been, he, he almost ripped his leg off twice and he's, <laughs> Gary's back in there playing. Give him the ball straight ahead. Crowd stirring a bit now on third down. Houston in motion. Rice going to go that way and throw it that way. Too low, incomplete. Well, now I like what the, what the defense is doing. They know you got a left-handed quarterback, and he's going to run to his left, and he's throwing all of his passes, those quick passes to his left side. Make sure that the defensive end on that side, when he comes up, he comes straight up the field and forces him to throw right away. That's what they did. It was incomplete. Bar to punt. Kirkhoff waiting. And he will <laughs> make the catch. Did he signal for the fair catch and then run with it? I don't know, but he ducked under the, the defender. Well, the officials are having a conversation. Spot at the 11. Apparently he didn't. You know, watch Kirkhoff. Now, does he wave his arm? No, he doesn't. But watch what happens. Boom! He just ducks. He comes back up and picks up just two yards, but he picked up two great yards. I call that two risky yards. Yes. He'll stay in as the back. Hunt on first down. Pitch out to Andy Hunt. And a nice little pass. And Andy Hunt has been held in check. C.J. McMahon with the tackle. Tackle by number 41, Jeff Dyke. Gain of about four. This will form gain of about five. What you're trying to do is get it to the wide receivers, either good or Hunt, as fast as you can so that they can work in the secondary. You know, it's only like a two or three yard pass, but you're, you're hoping that they're going to pick up extra yards because they're going to be one on one coverage on the outside. Wait, did they get the right football in? Here we go. You don't see that often. Uh -huh. Apparently, DePaul has their own ball. Hunt going to keep it on second down. The Giants ready. Bowden in there to cut him down. You know, this really is, is, is kind of a critical possession for DePaul. You did what you wanted to do. You held Wabash on the first kickoff in the, in the second half. Now you got to do something with the ball. Third and four. Here comes pressure. Hunt gets it away. Too high. Incomplete off the hand of Good. I'll tell you, everything that Wabash did on that play was absolutely perfect. The defensive lineman had a rush. They got their hands up. And Hunt only had one guy to throw it to. And he had to throw it over top of the defensive line. And, and, and he couldn't get it to the uh, wide receiver. Actually, it was for Good. And they played it well. Kristen back, Seago into punt. Here they come, 10 in. Seago gets it away. And Kristen will make the fair catch in Tiger territory. Excellent field position for the Little Giants when we come back to Crawfordsville. Ball with a seven point lead here in the third quarter, 123rd battle for the Monon Bell and Tigers and Little Giants alums around the country. Send us your party photos, mononbelltv at gmail.com. 
will share them. That guy brought the party with him. Very nice. It is. He also plays the drums that aren't very good. But Newport okay. Beach, Naperville, Charlotte, Oklahoma. Look, and they've got the stripes on. Beautiful. Now you can tell, this guy must have been one of these guys on the sidelines. Sure, but look, he's married to a tiger. So it's yeah. a split household. <laughs> Boys against girls. The girls are going to win, I hate to tell him. Got to tell his son to go to the winning side. <laughs> go over to the old gold. <laughs> God, you have to love it. He'll learn. Yeah, of course, it's great. What a fun weekend. Fun weekend, both places, down in Greencastle, up here in Crawfordsville. Good opportunity, great field position for the Little Giants. And Rice has an open receiver. Catch and turning up and stretching to the 20 is Oliver Page. Well, you talk about heads up by the quarterback, Connor Rice. Connor Rice faked like he was going to run. He had no intention of running with the football. And then he sees Page, number two, break into the open. Watch this. Here he is. He fakes like he's going to run. He sees Page making his move. I mean, this is just a, a great throw and catch. Fakes the handoff on first down. Kristen with the catch. Down at the 15. They got to get Kristen a touchdown. I mean, the guy's all year long. He's a receiver. He's a very good player. He handles the ball. He runs with the ball. He does all these things. Punt return, kickoff returns. And he's a wide receiver. And he has no touchdown catches. Playing in his third Bell game. An outstanding high school quarterback. As were many of the players on both these teams. Been a little banged up this year. Johnson trying the middle, and that just has not paid off today for the Little Giants. The middle hasn't netted much. That's a play that I think they use just to get the clock started. Because it doesn't pick up anything. It hasn't all day. Gray right through the middle. Paul Nelson, Mitch, and Kiyosaki. Longthorn and Corey as well. The men up front have really held their ground because last year they got destroyed up the middle. Third well, and three. Double tight ends, Burrish is in. Pinola the back. And finds a crease. And wiggles his way down to the number 10. First Pinola down, Little Giants. Tackled by number 45. Well, he's still Jack limping, Williams. you know. You talk about guts and, and a heart. And Take a look at Panola. Panola almost fakes like he's going to go right off tackle. There's a double tight end. He fakes in there and then he gets slides back to the outside, sees where the first down is, and gets it. I like this guy's a runner though, but I, you know, he's not quick enough to go wide left or right. Rice going to fake the handoff, keep it himself, has a block inside the five, stretching and down at the one. And this was a play when you see Connor Rice running to his left. He was going to run all the way. He had no intention of throwing the football. When you see him take off, when he tucked that thing away, you knew. Second and goal. Pinola. In, touchdown, Wabash! You know, Panola's one of these guys here that you go in the huddle, you say, you know, Panola, we need a touchdown. He, okay, I'll get it. And he does. That's just drive. On about a leg and a half. Tutsi ties it at 17. Panola just give him a little crease, he'll make a touchdown. Wabash College Little Giants back to even 17-17 here in the third, and they have all the momentum and excitement. Things a little quiet on the golden black side. Well, and we talked about in the opening about this defense and how they wanted to shut 
this young man down, that's Matt Hunt. And the last three passes that he has thrown have been very high and not close. So at one time, I was saying that, you know, it may be, he maybe hurt his arm. They were looking at his arm and working on it. We're going to try to find out if there is something wrong with it. Because he's sure not going to just beat this team line up and beat him by running himself. And he is the leading rusher on the team. Roberts waiting deep. Nayrig to kick. Deaton. And Deaton met and dropped the 25. And a big hit. A little more excitement on the red sideline. Luke Zeniak with a nice special teams tackle. Time for the Tigers to at least string together a drive. One, you want points. You take a consolation prize of giving your defense a little breather because it got worked over a little bit. And I think I think that Matt uh, Hunt has got to step back and, and just let him know I'm throwing the ball to back some of these guys off because he's tried to fake a run and try to run with Kirkhoff and it's just not working. You got to loosen these guys up because you got too many guys at the line of scrimmage. They got eight up front. Hunt with time, going to take a shot. And it's going to be incomplete and no flag. Andy Hunt. No flag on Parks. You know, you just thought, I mean, that was the perfect out that they had. They got his younger brother, Andy, is running down the left side that blocked really well in the line of scrimmage. And look at this pass, it's right on target. But I, I'll tell you what, there was no pass interference. Parks played it beautifully. Hunt gonna run on second down, get a little room. Spin his way up near the 40, that'll be a Tiger first down. He ran right at Parks, he said, okay, I'm gonna knock one of my passes down, I'm gonna run over you. This is quick, he had to get out of there because the rush was on, but just take a look at number two is Parks, watch this. Okay, and picked up three more. Kirkhoff with the block that sprung him. Hunt. Got an open receiver, incomplete. Wilson, the target, the flag comes down. Pettiford was out there. It's gonna be holding. Boy, this is what really loosens up a defense. Did you realize that on the last play, when you looked at Wapash, they only had three guys on the line of scrimmage, three defensive linemen? But they still beat him on the outside. That's Wilson. number five on an eligible receiver. Automatic first down. That's Pettiford. Okay, giving up the 10 yard penalty instead of the score because he was beat. On first down, Hunt gets in the open and has room. And Matt Hunt is off to the races. Touchdown, Tigers! Fifty-one yard scamper for Matt Hunt in his fourth Bell start as a Tiger quarterback. Let me tell you something, my friend. Kirkhoff, you've been talking about him blocking all day long. Well, I'm telling you, Jason Kirkhoff is the guy that opened this thing up. The offensive line did a terrific job, but Kirkhoff gets his block, and that enabled Matt Hunt to score the touchdown. High snap. And Adams' PAT is good, and give Ian Good a gold star on that one. What a job to get the ball down. That's twice he had to pull the ball. All right. The guy you want to look at is number two in the backfield is, is Kirkhoff. He gets a, a block. But just take a look at once Hunt gets in the open, this guy's got tremendous speed. Okay, number two is Kirkhoff. Watch this block. They were blitzing on the right-hand side of the offense. He blocked Hanson. Man. Here he comes up close. Hanson down. 
The hole's open by the offensive line, especially the left side of the offensive line. Campbell and Saunders, touchdown. And I'll tell you, those two long, two long passes there, Kirkhoff, he's over, I don't know if he's saying anything or not. Could he even no, say I'm he telling, say I'll it. give you that answer. He's not saying anything, because <laughs> he doesn't say anything. He's very polite, but he's not very chatty. No, but we wondered about Matt Hunt's arm. Those ones he had the two down the field that were guys wide open, or not wide open, great plays. He can still throw it, don't worry about it. He's fine. Okay, Connor Rice, your turn. We're going to go four quarters today. <laughs> I have no doubt we're going to go back and forth for the rest of the afternoon. Kristen. Looking for a lane. One, two, three flags come in. There's a, Kristen is down at the 32. There's a clip in the middle of the field. It's Wabash. You know, I swear to you, for 11 years I covered kickoffs. And the one thing, and blocked on kickoff returns. The one thing they say, well, if you see a number or a name, none of these guys have names on their back, don't hit it. If the guy, you know, if the guy's in front, don't hit him. It's his back. You can't tell the back of his neck from his face. That's not so hard. Okay, here we go. Take a look at number 23 on the left of your screen. That's holding and blocking from the back. Luke Kaciniak had a nice yeah. tackle on the kickoff team. Not so good on the kickoff return team. <laughs> First down for Wabash. Rice completes it to Thomas. Number 19, Kyle Rice's pass completed to number five, Ryan Thomas. And that's another Wabash College touchdown. Hep, you know, I've been, we've been talking about this all day long. Uh, these guys are coming off the line of scrimmage, running down about 10, coming back to eight, and the ball is there. Again, I'll use the word, you got to plaster them. Plaster the receivers, be on them. Ivan Martinez in. He's unable to seal a block for Panola, who gets the carry. Matt will get three. Will Longthorne with another tackle. And I'll tell you what, I like, I like both of these offensive lines. I really do. I mean, these guys, first of all, Wabash's line is about 25 to 35 pounds heavier than the Paws defensive line. But it isn't vice versa. And, you know, the pause offensive line, they're not that big. And now they're going really heavy with Burrish and Martinez in. And Rice is going to be caught and wisely gets it away. DePaul wants a flag saying that Rice was out of the tackle box, none forthcoming. Boy, that here's a classic example. You got Ben Tom or yeah, Ben Thomas, Ryan Thomas running. Wide open on, or trying to run right open to the left, look, or to his right. And he knows that he's covered. That's the one time that Hep just plastered him. He had no place to throw the ball, and then the defensive line took over. Matt Mitch had the pressure, and now DePaul calls a timeout. The first of the half. Attention, well, if they didn't like attention, what they please. saw, Jay Hood, the we defensive coordinator. For Jeremiah Jacob Bircher. But that could become costly in a, Jacob in a game that's this tight. Turning into timeout Jacob on a third Bircher, down and seven with six minutes to go to in the third quarter. Uh, uh, they are so precious when you get into Jeremiah that fourth Jacob quarter. Mm -hmm. and, and isn't it always you think, oh, why is that such a big deal? You know, it's the third quarter, six minutes to go. But invariably, you're coming down thinking, you know, if we just had one more timeout, we could have run one more play to get in field goal range, get it 10 yards closer, make it a 25 yard kick. Instead of a 40 yard kick. I like it when you're interviewing the guy afterwards, the coaches, and the guy said, Jesus, we only had one. I said, We well, had a guy to call in the first place. <laughs> don't, you know, don't blame me. Seesaw game. 
Now you're going to, if you like line play, ladies and gentlemen, watch this. You're going to see this defensive line on third down in, in what, seven. Mm -hmm. They're going to tee off and come. Wabash, seven straight victories, tied for the longest streak in the 123 years of this series. Oh! Rice's pass is a bullet. Intended for Thomas, incomplete. Chandler Nicholson had coverage. Boy, he let go of that fastball. Well, I'm going to tell you, they had the pressure on. If he didn't let go when he let go, he got hammered right after he threw it. Connor Rice took a hit. Looked at his lineman and said, anybody see that train? Hey! Kirkoff deep, Marr to punt. Fair catch called for and made. <laughs> Kirkhoff had to elevate a little bit. He was only 5'10". He had to get up to about 6'2 to catch that one right in the had, chest. And he had room. This is what, I mean, don't fair catch it. He's, he didn't fair catch any of the other ones. All right, here's the situation. You got to just take a look at the defensive line. If there's three men coming, then you're going to see Hunt, Matt Hunt, go audible into a run. But if you got four guys up on the line of scrimmage, this is the time to go down deep because you only got man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. Hunt, Kirkhoff, unable to make the first man miss. Pettiford with the tackle. No game. Hey, one thing about these defensive backs on both of these teams, they really have all learned how to tackle in the open space. They do a great job. Second and ten. Hunt, back shoulder throw, intended for Wilson, incomplete. Oh, and he had Wilson. Wilson had it. I mean, oh, Hunt, Hunt just threw it too hard, too fast. Pettiford was already facing downfield. Just take a look at the pass. All he has to do is get it to the outside. Just get it there. Wilson was wide open. Well, we were wondering. I guess that's our answer. His arm's okay. Yeah, I guess so. That one was moving. Third and ten. Three-man rush. Hunt. Off the hands and incomplete. Wilson, the target again, couldn't hold it. Pettiford right there with him. He's got Pettiford, Wilson, Wilson, and Pettiford. Look at this ball. The ball is there. But Pettiford waited and just stripped him. That was a great defensive play. It'll be a quick three and out. Boy, they're coming. They are coming. Sego, Kristen Fair catch made. Fair catch called for. And the ball will be at the 40 for the Little Giants. Let's check in with Matt. Stop for the Little Giants defense right there. But one thing about this defense, even though they've been solid this year and they're very senior laden, they haven't caused a lot of turnovers. They've only had 16 turnovers caused throughout the course of the year. And if they're going to win this game today, they're probably going to have to, to force at least one or two. Back to you guys. Long way to go on this one. Very good, Matt. Offense on the field now. Did they just try to run up the middle again? Yeah, you know, they tried it all day. First carry of the day for Isaac Avant. Tackle the by number 15. I swear, I think it's just to get the clocks moving. You know, about a yard, it'll be second well, it down works. The clock does move. Yeah. Oh. Help me. Kulf, well, Nelson, Mitch, and Kiyosaki deserve a lot of credit because they have held their ground against a bigger offensive line for the Little Giants. These guys are getting, the thing about the defensive line, if you watch them, they're getting leverage. Rice through his progressions and throws a strike to Page. Number 19, Connor Rice's pass is completed to number two, Oliver Page. 
Baker. Let me tell you something, this is a bad spot because Page had to come back to the ball and when he came back, he didn't get, he got to the, about the 48 yard line. He did not get to the 50 yard line. Look at it. And that's another one that's Be spotted at the 50 and be a little giant first down. Levant trying to slip away, can't do it. One more tackle for Thomas Gray. Tackled by number 33, Thomas Gray. You know, it's amazing when you sit up here and you take a look at it. We've been around this thing as long as we have. You take a look, as soon as you see the left guard pulling, when you see the left guard pulling going to his right, you know that that thing is going to be a sweep. And these linebackers and safeties are really reading the guards. So it's going to be a pass, they'll just set up. Like right now, it's a pass. As soon as, as, soon as they set up, you know. Rice surveying, throwing, Christian goes up and makes the catch. Between a pair of defenders, beautifully thrown ball, Leffler finally got him out of bounds. This, this ball took a long time to get there, and I can't believe that they completed this. Take a look at this offensive line. When they all set up like that, you know that there's gonna be a, a, a pass or draw. But take a look at this. Way too far up, and I believe that the fault of that one is Baker. Cody Baker, who was the guy taking the corner on the outside, didn't get back deep enough. Wabash first down. Vaughn looking for a little room as his legs cut out from under him by the safety, Rocky Leffler. If you take a look at on, on a play, on a running play, you can tell it right off the bat. When they run right, Wabash does, that left guard has got to be involved in the play. So as soon as he picks up and starts to move, you take a see that you can see the guys, the, like the middle linebacker and the safeties are all moving to the left. They're there before the ball carrier gets there. Zach Williams is down for DePaul. Backup middle linebacker. Took his helmet off and threw it away in disgust. Oh, baby. Coach Lynch out to have a look. I'll tell you, there's a the thing that scares you. There's a guy sitting there, and they're having, they're, you know, they take the time which they have to do for the guy, and he hurt his arm. He just, he, he is in pain. He did throw his helmet. But the nice thing is when that guy pops up and he starts running off the field, everybody takes a sigh of relief. DePaul, seven point lead, 2.54 to go. Tigers trying to get to eight and two on the season. Manola back in as the back for Wabash. The Giants coming in at eight and one, still have a chance to get a share of the conference championship. Try to get into postseason. Manola, what an effort he's had today. Nice read on the blocking and turning it up for a positive gain before Chris Hawk got him down. And I agree with you. I think he's playing on a leg and a half. I mean, this guy, has been, they've been out to see him twice in the first half of the game. He's back in play. And, and, and when you look at him, these guys just do not want to leave this game. This And this guy's at least on a sophomore. I mean, a senior, you can maybe understand it. But he's the sophomore in this game. This is the biggest game of the year for all these guys. 19 carries now for Panola for 70 yards. Page comes in motion. On third down, Rice running, looking, throwing, got it, cut! And the touchdown, Oliver Page! I gotta tell you, Connor Rice, that was a beautiful pass. You talk about a heads up play. You talk about a left arm quarterback running to his right. The toughest throw that you can make. And he hits 
Con Oliver Page on the dead run going into the end zone for a touchdown. Tutsi ties it at 24 apiece with 154 remaining in the third. All right, here's, take a look at this. There goes Page, Oliver Page. Now, this guy is wide open. This play takes a long time to develop. And that's Leffler that was covering him, number 20. But when you look at what, what Connor Rice did on this play, watch it, watch this, watch it. Now he's got to turn his body to make the throw, which is one of the toughest throws that he can make, and it's right on the money. Page didn't even have to hesitate. He didn't even slow down. Look at this. Turn, throw. And he also had Thomas Gray, number 33, in your face. <laughs> Sixty yards and seven plays, and we're even. This is what a rivalry game should feel like. This perfect. Oh, yeah. Nice afternoon. Big crowd and a back and forth affair. Page eight for one thirty and a score. Didn't you say a little earlier we'll be here for a full four quarters? <laughs> We're just, not talking. About, you have to just be here for had four that quarters, feeling, didn't you, you, that it would go back and forth? Oh man, do you love this? I do. Mayrig's kick taken by Roberts. Roberts able to wiggle away from a couple of little giants. Get up here the 30 and a pair of Tigers going after it, then looked and said, wait a minute, we're on the same team. What am I, what am I knocking you down for? Hey, this is one where the coaches say, I don't care, hit somebody. And they did. Yes. Hunt had the long run, only to have Rice come back with the touchdown pass to answer it. What can the Tigers do? Hunt looking for some room. Caught and dropped. Ludwig, the first one in to get a hold of him. Well, there's one thing on a, on a running play, you can either name, you know, Bowden, Hanson, Ludwig, you're not going to be wrong. They're one of those three. Nick. Second down, seven. Kirk off to the left of Hunt. Here comes pressure. Hunt gets it away. And it's a catch for Ian Good. And he tiptoes up the sideline, out of bounds at the 39. You know what impresses me? And you too, and I know that when you're looking at all these receivers, receivers, you talk about awareness of knowing where you are on the field. Every one of these guys on both these teams know exactly where they have to be, what they have to get in order to move the chains. On first down and 10, it's Hunt. Going right up the middle, Austin Brown. Able to corral him after a gain of five. And then we're under a minute to go, third quarter. Total awareness, both of these quarterbacks have total awareness about the field, about the defense. You talk about studying defenses for a long period of time. And especially, you know, you've got Matt Hunt that's been, this is his fourth Moon on Bell game. Kirkhoff slipping out of tackles and sliding down in little giant territory down at the 46. You better tackle this guy. I mean, I mean put him on the ground. Don't go reaching for him. You reach for him, you're going to miss him. And the Tigers will let the clock wind down, and that gets us to the end of the third quarter, tied at 24. And what did Coach Lynch tell us? We need to get it to the fourth quarter and see if we can make some plays. Well, they've gotten this far. 
This is where he said we needed to be where we are. Tigers and the Little Giants, and this has been a bell game for the ages. Hunt with the scurry. And then it's Rice connecting with Page to tie it at 24. 15 minutes to go in Crawfordsville. Start of the fourth quarter. Paw and Wabash tied at 24. You get a sense visiting with both sides that they felt it was going to be a tight game. Yeah, they get, and you know, normally, you know, the coaches are him and haw a little bit about a game because they, they got guys hurt in last last year when you Lynch had a lot of guys that were injured going into the game. But you, you sit there and look at the coaches on this field, and I'm telling you, they Hunt know. Gonna unload. Andy Hunt out there incomplete. CJ McMahon had really good coverage. McMahon, I'm gonna tell you something, McMahon had great coverage, but you watch Andy Hunt, what he does at the end of this play. Watch him trying to get the penalty. He's gonna lean, he knows he doesn't have a chance. Watch him lean back into the defensive back. You see that? He's trying to get a flag. That kid's a game man as a sophomore. Hunt back to the air on second down. Good turn and catch by Nolan Ayers. This is what the back door pass should be like. When you're going to turn where the defensive back has no chance whatsoever, watch the throw, watch the catch by Ayers. Look at this. It's a back shoulder throw. When you're looking at it, Pettiford has no chance to make a play on the ball. None. On first down, here comes pressure. Hunt runs out of time, and Burrish will spin him down back near midfield. Ethan Burrish with his seventh sack of the year. Ethan Burrish has been coming all day long. I know we haven't been mentioning his name, but he's been putting pressure on. He's been getting there a little bit late, but this time he comes from the outside. Look at Burrish. Hunt thought he was going to break himself back out to the other side. We talked to Burrish yesterday. He said, most important, we got to slam him into the inside and make sure he doesn't get out. That was perfect defensive end play. Loss of nine. Hunt going to look to run on second and 19. Number 10, Matt Hunt on the carry. By a legion Don't you like the heads up play with these quarterbacks? And you take a look at what Hunt just did there. He went back to pass and he, right away he didn't see anybody open. But it was only it was only second down and 19. So he needed to pick up a few yards anyway to give him a chance to make a third and 10 or third and 12 play. And the crowd making some noise on both sides. Hunt. Gonna flip it out. Kirkhoff catch, looking for the sideline. And Kirkhoff will get it up close. It'll be fourth down in decision time. Would you kick a field goal? I'm gonna ask you now. We've got Marco Adams. I didn't ask you that. I said, would you kick a field goal? If it's less than one, no. No. I and wouldn't Bill anyway. Looking. I wouldn't anyway. Three points is not gonna win this football game. You gonna take a timeout? Regroup. No, the officials, no, the officials gonna are going to measure it. Yep. Tell you, they're going for. If they don't, if they don't have it, they're going. Why not? It's been seven years since you won this thing. I got a chance to get a, get myself in a position to get a touchdown instead of a field goal. I'm going. Shane Gang's going to come out. Looks like they're about a football or so short. Don't you love when the officials put their arms up like this? They're not even close to what it really is. <laughs> and I, it's maybe sometimes the two arms don't match. Take a look at this thing. You know, it's it's a screen to the outside, but watch what Kirkhoff does in this play. 
just kept his head down. He's looking for the marker. That's hustle. It's also hustle by the defense. Now the question is, you're going to go for it. I know they are. Nope. They're going to send in Marco Adams. No, oh, come on, coach. 40-yard field goal attempt. The last couple snaps from Matt Krupe have been high. Good is the holder. And he's been outstanding today. Adams will try to give the Tigers a lead. No good. He pushed it. Twelve fifty-seven to go, and the little Giants get the ball back. Well, well. Adams has set the record for field goals made in a season. The career leader in field goals for the Tigers, but he pushed it to the right. Well, you know, and the coach, when you do this, you make this decision. You do have all the confidence in the world with your field goal kicker. And you got a team that's really been coming from behind in this second half. Is it? It's kind of a deal where you just want to get them a little bit more momentum. If we make the field goal, we're up three, and you got you know you got some momentum. But I just think that that short yards away, this, these guys have been moving the ball. Tristan on first down. Number eight, Drake Tristan on it's the drilled carry. by Thomas Gray. Tackle by number 30, 33, George I'm gonna hold him on that tackle. Second down and six. Second down and six. And we have an unbalanced line to our side. They got six off the offensive linemen in the game. They'll run Panola right that way. And Panola will number 31, Matt Panola on the carry. be tackled by Tackled David by Corey. Seven, David and Panola going to have to and come out of the game. He's got a sleeve now on his leg, the leg they looked at. He'll be back. He always comes back. <laughs> He's going to come back. All right, here's look at this offensive line. They're just drilling. Panola, he gets hit on that left knee. Limping throughout the afternoon, then he goes to the sideline, rests for a minute, and comes back. Brand new for a play or two. Johnson spun down Everybody quickly in the backfield. Thomas here. Gray again. <laughs> My <laughs> goodness, what a game. When was the last time you've seen a guy go straight up the middle and all of a sudden he's facing going the other way? <laughs> Gray hit him. He turned around. He went back the other way. This guy, some player, man. Watch this. Johnson goes up, goes into the hole. Watch this. Pink, where's he facing now? He's going back the other way. Chris Hawk in there to spin him around as well. Second and nine. Rice. All sorts of time going up top for Page. And it's going to be a penalty flag on Cody Baker. He never turned around. Exactly right. He didn't have to touch him. He never, he didn't play the ball. He played the man. And when you do that and you don't turn back to look at the ball, it's pass interference. The good thing about college football, it's a 15-yard penalty for pass interference. But when you take a look at this, watch. Watch Baker. Watch Baker. Watch his head. His head never moves. He's just looking straight at the receiver. Never really looked at the ball. That's pass interference. Wait a 15-yard penalty, right? There you go. Up to midfield. Rice's numbers. Back to work on first down. Johnson looking to get outside. Nothing there. Number 21, Kamir Johnson on the carry. Kevin Kiyosaki coming down the line. Tackle by 33, Thomas Gray. No gain to be second down. Isaac Avant going to come in as the back. 
They got a handful of carries in the first half. If you're Wabash, you keep it in the hands of your senior quarterback, Connor Rice. And they'll do just that, and he'll wind up and take a shot. And Page will have it slip out of his hands, incomplete. Brooks Hep had coverage. Page had a step. Let me tell you what, Bruce at, at Hep, Brooks Hep knew he was beaten. Watch what he does at the end of this play. He's gonna wait, wait, wait. He knows he's beaten. Well, watch what he's watching for him. As soon as the ball comes in, he'll hit the ball. Bang, bang. The ball's out. What a great play by a defensive back. He knew if I touch him, I got pass interference. But if I wait and wait and wait, which he did, and all he did is time it perfectly and hit the ball. Hep is 6'1". If he's six feet, that's a touchdown. <laughs> True. Look out. Rice escapes, stays on his feet. And is down to the Tiger 44. Thank you, by 33, Thomas Gray. Look at this, there was no place to throw it, but that was a rush by the defensive line that made this happen. And then the linebackers just popped up and, and made the play. Man, I like these defenses. Fourth down and four. No, he's kicking. Well, I, th I think you have to. Hmm? Well, you don't have to, but I think you should. Maybe I should say that. You should too. <laughs> it's like a combination between have to and should. Kirkhoff back. Hold on. Here comes the referee, and they're going to call timeout. DePaul is going to call a timeout. They're second. Mm. You know why? He had too many guys on the field. The coach was halfway in the middle of the field. Timeout. Screaming timeout. That's what Wabash did. They ran in and got set, and they were going to punt it in a hurry. All right, there's one in the back. Let me, wait a minute, I got a little, I got a little doohickey here. Here's your doohickey, would you? I'm gonna use that. Let's see, okay, one. Well, guess what? This little guy doesn't work. I had one I could point at. So, two, four. Yeah. Yeah. He makes 12. He makes 12, and that's why the coach called timeout. Heads up by the head coach. Well, you could either call timeout at that point or tackle the kid trying to run on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then you got uh, they got 13 on the field, 12 guys and a coach. Fourth and four. Boy, here's where you tell you, you, you your punt return team don't do something stupid. Stay away from this guy. Let him kick. Kick off. Makes the fair catch inside the 10. Tiger football in a 24-24 tie. Tie game here in the fourth quarter. 123rd battle for the Monon Bell. Paw and Wabash. Boy, we had some plays made. Buckle up, boys and girls. This is going to be a good finish. Nine and a half are going to be pretty good. And they're partying in Boston, in Colorado, in Palo Alto, Salt Lake City, Vail. Oh, I love it. This is great. This is great. Love Greensboro. This. Isn't that terrific? Thank you very much, folks, for, tur for turning those things into us. That is beautiful. Boy, be, be very proud of both of these teams, man. You're talking about the biggest game for the seniors on both of these teams in their lives. It's their last shot. I bet you both coaches told these guys, don't make any stupid mistakes now. Hunting the offense back on the field. Start deep in their own territory. Here comes pressure. Hunt trying to keep it. Bowden in there to drop him. Well, what's happening, to take a look at Bowden comes from the outside. He's a linebacker, and he comes back up on the line of scrimmage. But here you'll see him right on the corner in 46. Now watch, he crashes down. That's what they're supposed to do all day long. If you looked on the other side of the field, the other defensive end crashed down. So they're both met Hunt in the middle. Hunt is going to have to throw the ball out of here. You, I don't think you can run out of here, not against these guys. 
Loss of four, second and 14. Hunt going to go up top. That's pass interference. Incomplete. Wilson, the intended target. Pettiford had coverage. Yeah, but I don't understand that one. That ball, when that ball's in, you can't push the guy off. You want to beat these guys on a pass play, really, if you have time, it's the one over the middle because the middle is going to be wide open. They give you the middle. This crowd's going now, third and 14. Hunt down the sideline, incomplete. It'll be three and out. Wilson the target again. Here comes the punt team. Okay, here's Wilson coming down the sideline. This, he's got Pettiford beat, but the ball was thrown out of bounds. He had no chance to get it. You gotta throw the ball into the playing field where the, where the receiver has a chance. He got it out. It'll take a bounce. It'll still be outstanding field position for the Little Giants. When we come back, 8.43 to go in the bell game. And that's where we're at for the first chance the 8.43. Tied at 24, Matt Panola on the bench. Ice on his knee, 74 yards on his 20 carries. This guy's been playing two quarters on a bad leg, folks. And I'll tell you, finally it got to him. But there's a lot of courage in that young man. Great job today. Stayed with it as long as he could. Boy. Shamir Johnson will be in the backfield with Connor Rice. Morrell in his first season as the head coach, fifth season on the staff. The Giants trying to set a Monon Bell record by winning eight straight. Christian with the handoff trying to find room and does! To the 30 and finally out of bounds. Drake Christian with the patience and then an explosion. Christian, by the time he gets this ball, folks, watch it. He's at full speed. Makes a cut, one cut. He really hadn't been touched except for right there. He, get, he gets missed, and that was Longthorne that missed him. Nice run, nice run. Four carries, 35 yards now. Drake Christian, first down. Still a long way to go. 8.15 to go in the fourth. Here he comes again. Same play, different result. Will Longthorn quickly in for the stop. That's one of those deals. Okay, he did it once to me. <laughs> I'm going to do it again. Come running over here again. They're trying to run as much clock as they can. They're at 7.52 and counting. For Wabash, the field goal team has not been steady today. They've missed a pair, missed one. In tight, had another one blocked, just made one of them. Johnson trying the middle. Some success this time before he runs into Thomas Gray. I'll tell you who else is a load on this Number offense is Burrish, the younger brother, the junior. Dylan. Dylan. He's going to pull and come up into the hole. Look at the block by Dylan. Excellent block. And then the guy that's going to make the tackle is Thomas Gray, number 33, who's made what, 104 today? 104 tackles? Yeah, on 104 tackles on 55 snaps. <laughs> Third and seven. This is it, boys. Yeah, big play in the game right here. Johnson motions empty. Rice going to do it himself. Uh -uh. Rice hit and will mark him down at the 22, needed the 19 for the first down. That play tells me they're settling for a field goal. I mean, otherwise, I mean, why do you call that play? Because the chance of that thing being successful is slim and none. Tutsi and the field goal team come on. 
DePaul missed their field goal attempt to try to take the lead. Can Wabash connect on their second of the day and go up by three? From 39. Seven twenty-four, six oh four to go. Great kick, boy! I tell you, the offensive line when they set on this field goal, they almost got the paw to get offside because they they all at one time when they said set, they all they all go down. As soon as they went down, somebody almost jumped on the defensive line. I don't know how to tell you this, but somebody just put a tripod in front of you. We'll play through it. <laughs> Tutsi feeling good about that one. The senior from down the road in Indianapolis. Andrew two for four today. Did I say three points would win, win this game? I, I had still that mean written that. Down. Okay. I still mean that. I, I still think there's a little ways to go here. <laughs> I think we'll have a, a few twists and turns in the neat part of being here for the better part of the week is you hear so many stories about games from years ago. Yeah. And not just last year, the year before, but maybe I should say decades ago. <laughs> the amazing part. And not the final score. <laughs> Vivid detail. <laughs> Deaton and Roberts back. Nayrig. High end over end. And Roberts grabbed and dropped shy of the 25. Hunt in the second half, four for 10, 28 yards. It does have a nice long run for a touchdown. Let's go, man. Let's go, baby. Now a little bit better field position, starting at the 25, a little room to breathe. And a whole bunch of time. And again, I'll repeat, no stupid mistakes. We've been here, we know how to play it. Showing pressure. And there's a flag. Delay a game. Delay game. So Jeff Ramsey talked about giving Hunt different looks, and that one confused him. It did. You know why? Because they came out of the huddle, and none of the defensive linemen, they had a three-man line, but none of them were down. Bursch and these guys were all up, standing up. And they had no idea who was down in the position. Now Bursch is down, the defensive line is down. There's still a three-man rush. Kirkhoff on first and 15. And he'll get five back to the original line of scrimmage before Evan Hansen stops him. Tackled by number 36, Evan Hansen. Looking to be second I love the in-house guy. No gain. Yes, there was. Oh, yeah, it was first and 15. That's all right. <laughs> we'll let it slide. That's no. a gain of five to get it to second and 10. Talk remember, about a homer. Remember the penalty? <laughs> yeah, it's a homer. Hunt. Reloads. Throws. Caught. A beautiful pitch and catch to Ayers, who uses his 6 4 frame to go up and snag it. You know how good this catch was? And I'll just watch Ayers. When Ayers waits and waits and waits for the last second to get himself airborne to catch his football, this is a great play by Ayers. First down at midfield. Hunt directing good to go to the other side of the formation. Hunt with room. 
exploding up the middle, and Matt Hunt is out in front again and has another touchdown for the Tigers. Did I say something about three points not going to win this game? You know, you don't make a mental error. You know this guy is, when he's been running, he's running right up the middle. That was just a great a great blocking by this offensive line. You know, you got to give these guys credit. Saunders, Campbell, Miller, Brooks, Trudell. These guys have been blocking the rear ends off all day long. Adams to make it a four-point game. No good. Excuse me. So it stays a three-point game with 4.48 to go. Let's see what happened on the PAT. You just pushed it. Pushed it. The snap and the hold were both good. All right, this, here's the only one I was talking about here. Watch him wait, and then he, at the last second, he just clears it. What a great play. Good throw. No chance for Pettiford. Then you got Hunt. This is a 50-yard run right up the middle. Hanson, number 36, the linebacker, misses the tackle, and you're not going to catch him. Watch at the end of this run. You want to see a guy take his frustrations out? Watch number 18, Brown, coming in. 18 on your left. Watch him. Keep an eye on him. Bam! He just knocks out Wilson. Here's a great view from it when you look at it, the blocking right in the middle. There is a missed tackle. And once you missed tackle this guy and he's got that open field, you're not catching him. 19 carries, 169 yards for Matt Hunt. But will the missed PAT by Adams loom large? Lee marker down. Yeah, you got clipping. As is Christian. He got another blocking in the back. I mean, this is another one of those deals. Why are you doing this? The player has already gone by you. You have no chance to help him out. And you're going to have blocking in the back. I already threw it. Go. You called it, mark it. Foul on the block. The block is a foul block. And there's never a Say what? It yeah. Sounds like when you try to talk and your mouth is open in the shower. That's what I They picked the flag up, and yep. I'm sitting there watching it, and I watched the official throw the flag, when, and he saw it. It was. All right, never mind. Onward, onward. Three plays, 75 yards. There's Hunt passing numbers, 164. On the ground, 20 carries, 182. And on first down for the Little Giants, trailing by three, Rice, the senior. Move his way out of the pocket and slide at the 30. When you see that run, that slide, you're talking about awareness. And we watched him all day. He has awareness. He knows exactly where he is, what's happening, and who's going to whack him. Vaughn slips out of the backfield. Instead, Rice going to go over the middle. Open receiver and a catch made by Ryan Thomas. Number 19, Connor Rice's pass is completed to number five, Ryan Thomas. You know Thomas. what's really unique about it? When you're watching this offensive line work, and, and they are a very good offense. offensive line, but just look what happens in the offensive line. Watch him spread to give Rice a chance to step up. As soon as he spread, the field opens up for him. He just stands behind us and says, okay, let me pick out who I need to pick out. Connor Rice hits him. Connor Rice is 19 and two as the Wabash starting quarterback. Floats one in the direction of Page, who makes the catch! Leffler and Baker, 20 and 21, are there. Both guys are there. Look at where this pass is thrown to. This is the perfect throw. Boom! Right between the two defensive backs, 
first down. 27 yard completion. Need I say, three points ties it. Ooh. Back to the air. No, he's going to run on first down. Thomas Gray stayed home. <laughs> I think Connor Rice tried to make a move on. And Gray, Gray just stood there. Are you done? And then whacked him. Connor Rice does a lot of things really well. Oh. Shaking in the open field yeah, is not one of them. Decision making, ball placement, leadership, so many good things. We didn't even get a chance to visit with the young man. We said, can we get to talk to Connor? They said, no, he's interviewing for the Orr Fellowship. He won't be able to make our meeting. So, no, fair enough. That's, right. enough. That's fine. Tell him we said hello. Second and nine. Back to work. Leaping catch made by Thomas. They're down to the 20. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm, we're just watching the guy carve this defense up. When you look at the placement of the pass, okay? Here goes the outside, Ryan Thomas. Look at this ball. The corner, Cody Baker, is in perfect coverage. But the ball was thrown where Cody couldn't get to it. Fifteen to go. DePaul clinging to a three-point lead. Rice rolling, looking, going in zone. Touchdown, Oliver Page. There really are no words to describe Connor Rice's performance today. I've, you know, it's been a long time since I've seen a quarterback put the ball exactly where he wants to in so many occasions. Tutsi's kick is good. That thing went into the dining room. 34-30. Still plenty of time for Matt Hunt and DePaul's offense. How many times have we seen this today? Look at this pass and look where it is. But the most important thing is look where Page was. He was behind the defense. Yes, it's like pitch and catch. Boy, did he read this perfectly. When Connor Rice came out, he knew exactly where that ball was going. And he put it there. Little Giants trying to win the eighth straight Monon Bell game over DePaul and set the series record. Connor Rice and the rest of these seniors trying to go out with another Bell victory, get a share of the conference championship, and keep their hopes alive to get into the playoffs. Yeah, they, you know, they, they, most importantly, they knew they just had to win this game. And everything else that happens, that they, ha they have no control over. But they did have control of this football game, and they've taken control of it. Let's go. Hey, guys. You got to remember something, folks. Connor Rice hey is six foot four. So when he's you moving, he sees everything. Got me. 220 pounds. This is a good-sized quarterback. All right, your turn. Speaking of four, DePaul missed field goal and a missed PAT here in this quarter. Four points, 34-30. Deaton to return. And he'll get walloped short of the 20. <laughs> Yo. That's one of those hello tackles. Hello. Gardner down for the stop. Look at here, watch this. You think you're moving? Bam, no you're not. Again, hello. Just 
Resnick on that special team stop. We give him credit where credit's due. Another one. He's at about he, he three would, today. Yeah, he's been calling his name a lot on special teams. From the 20. With the bell in the balance. Hunt. Scrambling hit and dropped. That's Hanson. Clock running. Tigers down to one timeout. Hunt over the middle. Pass is caught by Wilson. Clock will stop to move the chains. They're just up on the ball. They're ready to go. Hunt back to work. Looks, open receiver is good, and he makes the catch. Good, and the Tigers in Little Giant territory. 1.22 to go, trailing by four. Goodness between three guys. Do you think he hears anything? All he can see is that ball, and I got to go get it. Gain of 26. Hunt. And the Little Giants ready in the middle. Clock running, working toward a minute. That's one I don't understand. I mean, you're, you're throwing the ball well. They're giving you all the room. They're going to tighten up a little bit. They're, so, they're still going to give you the 10-yard patterns. They being Wabash. Under a minute. Hunt. Time. Surveys over the middle. God makes the catch. And he's down inside the 15. I think Good feels he's in a track beat. He's just running down and getting in the open. And, he, and he's just Hunt's throwing the ball to him. Pitch and catch, good for 20. Tigers need a touchdown. Hunt going in zone to his brother. Caught, touchdown! Matt to Andy, just like they're in the backyard. What a moment. How good is this? Well, we said we were going to play all four quarters, and by that we meant we were going to go back and forth. 38 seconds to go. Wabash has all three timeouts, and if this PAT is good, it will be a three-point lead. And I made a mistake. I see you can't win by three, but I didn't and realize the about the missed extra point. That's okay. Is this 37 34. What a game. You know, I, have, I, have, I really have not seen anybody leave here yet. Why would you? <laughs> this is a wonderful football game, folks. 1 24 off the clock, and they marched right down the field. And Andy Hunt, who's been quiet throughout the day, Gets the biggest catch of his life from your big brother. How special is that? Did you say something in, in, earlier in the game or in the opening about in the backyard they <laughs> played pitch and catch? Did you know they that did. was a backyard throw. That, wasn't that great? You know how many times they've done that to, you know, it was usually in the backyard. It's to, quote, win the game. <laughs> you know, that's what you hear, the touchdown to win the game. Trust me, we have a six-and-a-half-year-old son. And if you do that, you know, that's how you get him in for dinner. All right, one more to win the game. That one right there to take the lead. And if this holds up, it'll snap a seven-game losing streak this to is... the Wabash Little Giants. But they are not done yet. No, 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 no. And they've got all three timeouts, 38 seconds to go. And the last time Rice had the ball, he was surgical. And what they need to do defensively is don't really back off that much to give him, let him start throwing. Kristen fumbles it and picks it up and is off to the races. Look out. Spun down across the 35. Can Wabash keep the streak alive? They have 32.3. And all three timeouts. 
it's hard unless you've been down there to do this thing to imagine the emotion each one of these teams. I mean, the highs and lows. Just a minute and a half ago, Wabash was winning, and they said, we got the game. Wrong? Rice on first down, pressured, spins away, now caught again, and finally pulled down. Do you know Chris who Hawk finished him off. You know who caused this mess? Mitch, number 94. The man who was injured last year and didn't get to play and came back for a semester to play one more season of college football. These three guys, they, they had a three-man rush, and all three of these guys got to the quarterback. Now, you figure that out. This offensive line has been blocking extremely well all day long, and you've got a three-man rush, and they all got there. Again, fans, we please ask that you stay off the field. 37-34, Andrew Tutsi has a long field goal this year of 44. A field goal would tie it. You know, I just, you know, I hope these guys realize that there, there's still 25 seconds left to go in this ball game. Oh, I agree. Don't, don't <laughs> celebrate too soon. And you know what? There could be more work to do. Uh, I don't think anybody around here would be shocked if we headed to overtime. I wouldn't. No. Second and 16. Here they come again. The Rice. Three-man rush. Rice steps up. Has time. Throws. Complete. Turning up is Oliver Page. Get it just past the 40. You know he had to rush on again? Mitch. And another timeout called by Wabash. So Tutsi long of 44. They did have one block, but that wasn't his fault. That was just a collapse on the line. So they need to get down to about 25, 27, somewhere in there. Excuse me, partner, but that play took 12 seconds, and they had 25. So, you know, uh, you, basically you cannot throw the ball in the middle of the field. And you have to save one to get your field goal unit out. That's right. So they're down to one, right? Mm -hmm. So the middle of the field, to me, is basically out of the question, unless, unless it's deep middle. Right. In which case, then, you can go up, spike one, sprint everybody on, and have a last gasp attempt to try to get three to tie it and get it to overtime. Third down and five. Rice. Dancing around, pressured, and hit, and the ball's out! And the streak is over! DePaul has the football, flag is down. Nate Orson recovered. At the 41 yard line, penalty marker down. It's against Wabash. I gotta tell you, the guy that started this rush again was Mitch. They put him on the right defensive end spot and just turned him loose. We have a dead ball, personal foul. Terry Ruffin. Unnecessary roughness against Wabash. It's one snap, and this is over, and the bell is on the Tiger sideline. Seven straight for the Little Giants. Let me tell you something. They said they'd drink beer out of that thing at night after this over with. I'd drink. If I was on that team, I'd be drinking beer out of that. It tastes pretty good tonight. Ah, yeah, it would. <laughs> Four bell starts Whoa. for Matt Hunt. And in his fourth and final shot at the Little Giants, who have been the big boys on the block. He's got him 37-34, and he needs one snap. And Bill Lynch, fourth year in his second tour, and here come the students. Oh, this is beautiful. Well, all they have to do is take a knee, so I mean, they're not gonna hurt him, but look at that, look at this crowd. 
Look at Coach Lynch. They just got him with the bucket. He knew. He knew. When you talk to him, he knew. Both sides now going to finish at 8-2 and two on the season. And Matt Hunt and is going to go out a winner. Congratulations. 37-34 is the final. The Tigers win the Monon Bell. Boy, there, that's a picture you want to see. You got Hunt and Rice. Man, I'm going to tell you something. These guys, what a job they did. None of these guys have anything to hang their head about. This has been a wonderful football game. Coach Morrell, Coach Lynch, what a game. Congratulations to both Wabash and DePaul for a memorable Monon Bell. And good luck to our sideline reporter, Brad Wakamurka, for finding <laughs> the guys in there. First win since 2008, and Brad's going to have to go to work. Here's Brad. He's got a very happy head coach. All right, thanks, guys. With DePaul head coach Bill Lynch and coach seven years, that streak is done. What's it mean to win this thing? Um, I'm so happy for our kids, but the entire university. You know, this rivalry, and it's been going on so long, away from us. But now we. The green coach, coach, I love you. But I'm so. I love you, Coach Lynch. <laughs> you, got, you can see the love down here. I talk about the Hunt brothers, Matt and Andy, that last play, but the resilience that Matt had. Yeah, and uh, I'll tell you what, here in his shoulder the first half. And he just hung in there and hung in there. And, but he's a great leader and a great player. And an unbelievable, unbelievable way for him to go out. Unbelievable. Absolutely. That sums it up. Coach, congratulations. Thank you very much. Well, guys, let's go back. Nice job, Matt. Let's talk about that last play. Last play your whole time. He just went on one. He made a great move. We scored. Guys. I won the game, that's it. I don't want any garbage. Our fans are idiots, but I don't want any garbage. Everybody got that? Okay, we'll meet at 4.30 on Monday. 4.30 on Monday. You guys did a great job all year, Bell. I love you. Let's break it down on uh, Ethan. Bitter disappointment for Wabash. The bell belongs to the Tigers. We check in with Brad. All right, guys, here we go. Down here with Matt Hunt. Hey, guys, let me, let me talk to this guy real quick. All right, Matt, let's talk about what this means after four years to finally get this win. I, I, I'm at a loss for words. I mean, I, it's, it's unbelievable. I can't, I can't put it into words for you. It's the best feeling I've ever had in my life. And to do it with this guy, with the brother Andy over here, that last play, take us through it. I mean, it's a play we run all the time. We've, we've scored all corner outs all year. Uh, that's a lot of years of practice right there going into that play. Congratulations, Matt and Andy. Now you know what this feels like. Going to get a couple more? Yeah, I'm sure uh, hope for. We're working the offseason, and uh, I'm glad for the seniors, I'm glad for coach staff, I'm glad for the school. It's a surreal experience. All right, guys. Congratulations. Thank on you. The win. Appreciate it. Andy Hunt, who had 64 catches <laughs> on the year, only had three today, but he had the biggest one of his life for the touchdown, and the bell will be painted. It'll be black and gold, and a classy move right there for Wabash, saluting their fans and all their parents, and congratulations on all their success. But the victors today, the DePaul Tigers, and what a drive. They got the ball back with two minutes to go and marched right down the field behind their senior leader, Matt Hunt. The only, the only play I questioned a little bit was when Matt Hunt ran up the middle one time and the clock was going. But I'm going to tell you something. The throws to good are just incredible. But the last play to his little brother is just phenomenal. Watch where the ball is put when he throws this ball in the end zone for the touchdown. Looky here, bang, bang. That was perfect coverage. Everything was right, except that ball was on target. And there was nothing the defense could do about it. And then the defense came up big for the Tigers at the end. And they'll celebrate tonight and travel down the tracks with the Monon Bell. You've been watching the 123rd battle for the Monon Bell between DePaul University and Wabash College. Executive producer of Access TV Sports and producer of today's game, Daryl Ewald. Broadcast was directed by Andy Rosenberg. 
Features producer, Mike Ricci. Director of live event operations, Chris Markwell. Features editor, Wade Steiner. Technical director, Roberto Rios. Studio audio engineer, Doug Deems. HD net remote engineering, Jeff Carmen and Lonnie Thomas. Transportation by Tim Sally. Special thanks to all the hardworking staff from DePaul and Wabash for all their help with today's broadcast. For my partner, Paul McGuire, and our sideline reporters, Matt Hudson and Brad Wakamurka, Rich Cellini, saying so long from Crawfordsville, Indiana, where the 123rd Bone on Bell will be talked about for the next 123 <laughs> years, Paul. This was beautiful. I can't tell you. I have, I have done so many games for 46 years, and I gotta tell you something. This is the highlight. This thing here, the watching these guys play and the attitude of these players, I mean, it was just tremendous. And if you didn't like this football game, ladies and gentlemen, don't ever watch another game because you don't want to understand it. Good night, Crawfordsville.